Welcome to Peden Stadium in Athens, Ohio. Live college football this afternoon on ESPN3. It's a Mid-American Conference East Division showdown as the Bowling Green Falcons roll in to meet the Ohio Bobcats. And a very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Weekly. Happy to be alongside former Notre Dame linebacker and NFL veteran Rocky Boyman. Rocky, you take a look at this matchup. Ohio controls their own destiny in the MAC East with a win today. Meanwhile, if BG wins, the Falcons remain alone atop the division. It's a good matchup. Well, these are two of the better teams in the MAC East, and there's kind of a subplot going here. Last year, these two teams met, and it was a 49 to nothing beatdown on the hands of Bowling Green State. So even Frank Solar said probably one of his worst days as a coach and his legendary career so you got to imagine there'll be some uh, these guys want to get after it. let's focus in on bowling green first james kanapke is the trigger man of their up-tempo offense all he's done so far in his first season as a starter is lead the falcons to three come from behind fourth quarter wins well james kanapke had thrown all of 10 college football passes before he took over as a starter from the for the injured matt johnson in week one and he can do stuff like that short passes long passes gets the ball out of his hand very quickly very accurate, very efficient, and he's got to be. This is an offense, very fun. They're going to try to run 100 plays of offense here today, and Kanapke can lead them. No, the Ohio Bobcat defense doesn't need that. They want to control the football <laughs> on the ground if they can. And A.J. Olette is the key there. He did not play last week because of a bad ankle in the Bobcat loss at Central Michigan. He's a huge key today. Well, Olette was the guy they were missing last week versus Central Michigan because he can do things like this. Take it up the middle, and then bust it outside. Has the speed to take it to the house. This is a heavy run play action pass offense but it all starts with establishing the run Olet again a key guy was missing last week he has a little bit of an angle an ankle issue right now not a hundred percent but he's going to be out there he's going to give him the best chance to win this football game it's a perfect day for college football weather is spectacular here in ohio this afternoon plus it's homecoming for the bobcats we're expecting a loud crowd a lot of folks in the house should have a good one for you this afternoon bowling green the falcons in town to take on the ohio bobcats it's live on espn in just a moment. All right, let's do this. Got a good one on hand here at Peden Stadium this afternoon here in Athens. A Mac East showdown, Bowling Green and the Ohio Bobcats. Bowling Green rallied late at home last week to beat the University of Buffalo. Meanwhile, Ohio never got anything really going offensively in a miserable afternoon at Central Michigan last week. Ohio has won the toss. They defer to the second half. So that Bowling Green attack, up-tempo, uh, so effective, they get the football first. And I think that's interesting. The last thing you usually want to do is give the ball first to a high-tempo, explosive, number one in the max scoring offense like Bowling Green has. But I think it shows you some of the confidence that Ohio has in their defense. Ohio in their home green uniforms with the white pants and the white helmets. Dino Babers in his first season on the sideline for the Falcons. A perfect day. I mean, we had clouds in the morning, but this afternoon we got temperatures in the high 50s, low 60s, no real wind to speak of. A perfect day second Saturday in October for college football this afternoon and we are glad you are with us. Andre Givens, Ronnie Moore back to receive this kickoff for Ohio. Yazdani puts it into the air and this one will sail into the end zone for a touchback so the Falcons will start first and ten from their own 25 yard line. When, as I talked about in the open, Dave, this team is going to go very fast. This may be the last time I get to talk during this entire broadcast. They try to get a play every 15 seconds, and there's the guy that leads them, James Kanapke. You see there's seven interceptions, but even Dino, Dino Babers, the head coach, said this week, he's been a very accurate passer. Really, only one of those seven have been his fault as he really takes control of this offense. He's a redshirt sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Bishop Lures High School, 321 yards and a touchdown last week in a victory at home at the Doit against UB. From the 25-yard line, and right away they go to the air, completed pass across the 30, and out near the 38-yard line. The reception is made by Ronnie Moore. And Ronnie Moore, he's one of our impact players. He was a, led the team in touchdowns last year as a true freshman, but the guy that really gets them going is the running back, Travis Gein, through the air and out of the backfield. And quickly, 
They come to the line of scrimmage, and again, Kanapke connects to Moore, and Davis makes the stop. Torin Davis, the free safety. There are all kinds of injuries in this defense. We'll detail them, but Poling and Crutcher are impact players well, today. Well, Poling is one of the best players on this defense, and Antoine Crutcher is really key today because he's got to hold that line of scrimmage and really give them a chance up front and try to beat that offensive lineup for Bowling Green State. Heath Jackson makes the catch for BG. Layton made the stop. Jackson getting a good start here today. He only had one combined catch in the last two games for the Falcons. And see, this is good because this is what Bowling Green does so well is they get a lot of yards on first down. They lead the MAC in first downs with 158. So you got to put them in second and long, third and long situations. It all comes down to stopping them on first down and making them go 10 yards or more. And as soon as I say that, we get a penalty that's going to make it second and five. <laughs> Anthony Canella is the referee heading up this Mid-American Conference crew this afternoon from the 41-yard line. Kanapke on the play-action fake. The protection is good. Sends this one down the field long. It's caught. 30-yard line. And the catch is made by the freshman, Roger Lewis. Roger Lewis has been spectacular. He's a true freshman. He leads this team in reception. You see right away Bowling Green up on the ball, getting ready to snap another play. First running play of the afternoon taking it down near the 28-yard line. And, and talk about Travis Green right there again. He was a former wide receiver. You see him getting the, the ball out of the backfield here again. He's so good at catching passes out of the backfield, but also good between the tackles, especially for a guy who's only about 180 pounds. Travis Green with his first carry. Kanapke to throw again, and that ball is tipped away. Nice defensive play for the Bobcats right there. Coming up was Ian Wells. Wells did not play at Central Michigan last week. And just like that, third down, first third down situation of the afternoon for the Falcons. A spectacular break on the ball by Ian Wells. As you said, Dave, they missed him last week. He's their best man-to-man -man cover guy. He's going to be very key here in this ball game. Kanapke, pressure coming, sets up the screen beautifully. Here goes Green. Green breaks one tackle, still on his feet, inside the five-yard line. End zone, touchdown Bowling Green. And just like that, Dave, we're not only a, a, hardly a minute and a half into this football game. Look, the misdirection, everything goes to the right, then comes back to the left, and you get in the hands of a ball like Tra uh, in the hands of uh, Travis Green, who can make you miss, has exceptional vision. And just like that, again, this is, a, this is an offense, Dave, that 31 of their, well, now 32 of their 38 scoring drives have lasted less than three minutes. Tyler Tate is on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And just like that, less than 90 seconds into the game, the Falcons are on the board, 7-0. They've got the lead at Ohio. And we really saw this offense. There's lots of quick passes, lots of screens like we saw in this play. You see the offensive lineman get out there front, creating blocks down the field, but then it's all green from there, spinning. As I said earlier, tremendous vision getting into the end zone. And again, I really question Ohio winning the toss and deferring right there. The last thing you want to do versus a high-powered offense like Bowling Green, give them the ball first. Now all of a sudden, before the game, before the people have even gotten in the stands, Dave, it's 7 to nothing. Scoring play, six, draw, six plays, 75 yards in a minute 23. And that's exactly what Frank Solich didn't want to see happen. Back to receive this kick for Ohio is Robbie Walker, and he's becoming more and more a part of the offense for the Bobcats. Last week at Central Michigan, catching the ball, uh, also had a, a, a reverse run, and he's back deep to receive this kick. Well, special teams returns in particular are, are key for Ohio because they have the top kickoff return and top punt return in the max. So this is where they can pick up some hidden yardage for their football team. Anthony Farinella with the kickoff. And bringing it out from two yards deep. Across the 20. And up near the 23-yard line, and that's where the Bobcat offense will start. Daz Patterson on the kickoff return. Patterson had to basically carry the, the rushing load last week as Olette was unable to go. Yeah, but as we talked about in the open, it all comes down. A.J. Olette's got to have a huge game. That ankle he has, the right ankle you see there, is a little bit bandaged up. Not 100%, but he's got to find a way to really lead this team today through the ground. You see J.D. Sprague right there, quarterback. Sprague had a tough day at Central Michigan, just 7 of 21 for 98 yards, and he was sacked three times. 
Quarterback keeper. Ball is loose. Fumbled and recovered by Bowling Green. The ball popped out of there, and BG comes up with it. In this Charlie game, Walker. This team could not have started worse for Ohio. A nice run versus JD for JD Sprague, who's a dual threat quarterback, but you got to hold on to the football. And that's the difference, Dave, in Bowling Green, their defense. Their defense has been dreadful all year, right? But the last couple of games, they've gotten turnovers. They're actually leading the MAC right now with 13 tur uh, caused turnovers on defense. So after the turnover, the Falcons offense back out there. They'll start from the Ohio 32. Play action fake, pass caught. First down and a little bit more. It's Burbrink on his first reception of the game. Ryan Burbrink, the redshirt junior. 27th catch of the year. It's a first down. Falcons just outside the red zone. Going to keep this one on the ground. A little bit of running room in there for Travis Green. He's going to bring up second down in about seven. We talked about the linebacker polling playing for Ohio. That's good because they're without Blair Brown, one of their other really good linebackers. Kanapke, once again, they set up the screen. This is the play that scored the touchdown moments ago, and Green is going to take it all the way down near the one, uh, near the two-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Well, Dave, you said it. This is the exact same play. They said, well, it worked once. Let's try it again. It's all started, again, by the offensive line getting downfield, creating some blocks, and then letting Travis Green go. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Andre Givens gets the handoff. Maybe a yard. It'll be second and goal from just outside the one. And you'll see three running backs for Bowling Green. You'll see Green. You'll see Givens. You'll also see Fred Coppett. But Givens is the short yards back guy. Givens fighting to get to the end zone. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Again, as you see, just a straight downhill play. And a good job by Givens just finding a little bit of daylight in there and finding a way to push it and roll Spin whatever you got to do to get in the end zone. So, less than three minutes into this game, the Falcons have a passing touchdown, and now they have a rushing touchdown. Ruling that the field was a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. All right, so they're going to take another look at this touchdown play. You know, let's we'll see if we can get a look on here. If he actually did cross, did break the plane be hard to tell from this angle from there it looks like he crossed it if his knee wasn't down Let's see if we can get a get one on this this shot here I mean just just judging from those two shots if they called that a touchdown first I don't see anything that that clearly uh, says that it wasn't obviously it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn a call There's Frank Solich again, as I said in the open. That 49 to nothing uh, game last year. I, I was actually, I actually called that game. It was, it was very similar to this one. Everyone's hyped up, big time implication game. After further review, ruling on the field stands. Yeah. Touchdown. touchdown. It is a touchdown. Yeah, well, and, and as I was saying, it, it was just very similar to this. A few plays into the game, not even five minutes in, and Bowling Green was up 14 to nothing and didn't look back. So. Ohio's got to do something, find a way to stop the bleeding here today. Five play drive, 37 yards and 65 seconds. Tate adds the extra point. And Bowling Green has a quick 14-0 lead, trying to spoil homecoming here at Ohio. Gibbons fights his way into the end zone for the Falcons. The Bobcats get the ball when we come back. 12-18 to go in our opening quarter just underway. Bowling Green, two possessions, two touchdowns. Andre Givens a moment ago, a two-yard touchdown run. We shot a, a, a <laughs> shot of the crowd here a moment ago here at Ohio. There are a lot of people here, a big, big crowd on hand for this one. Well, like you said, yeah, homecoming. Everyone's fired up in the stands, a, gr a great uh, atmosphere here. But now Ohio's got to find a way to get back in this football game. And the toughest thing is now their game plan of controlling the clock, keeping Bowling Green's offense on the sideline, that's a little bit thrown out the window now. Patterson off the goal line. To the 20 yard line, out to the 22, and that's where the Bobcats will start their second possession. 
I still think that Ohio, they can't, it's not time to panic yet. Yes, you're down two scores, and it's early, but I, I think you still stick with the game plan of, of running the football. It's just, you know, the, the tendency now is to, is to press a little bit because you're down two scores. Not even four minutes have gone by in the game. Yeah, Sprague ran one play, an option to the short side, picked up 14 yards. That was good, but then he fumbled, which was bad, and BG <laughs> yeah. converted that quickly into their second touchdown. Sprague back to pass. Circles back away from the pressure. Is going to tuck it and is going to run it out of bounds. Maybe a yard. It'll be second down and nine. We did a nice spin move, a 360, as Charlie Walker was closing in for the sack, number 46. Well, and he's very good with his legs. A nice job feeling the rush and spinning back out and at least making something out of nothing. But how about Gabe Martin, the linebacker, coming out, flying into your screen and really stopping him for about a one-yard gain, if that. Olette is a sidecar to Sprague's right on second down and a long nine. From the 23-yard line, Sprague again, pump faking. Rolling short side, throwing back across his body, pass incomplete. Was trying to get it to Chase Cochran, and that was good defense by the Falcons. Yeah, that was I.J. Bream, one of their cornerbacks. Now, as I said earlier, Bowling Green's defense has been bad all year, especially their secondary, but this has got to give them a lot of confidence. A nice job finding a way to break that pass up because Cochran's a go-to guy, number eight, a very, one of their best, most explosive wide receivers. They got to find a way to get him the ball, but again, they got to set up that run so it can open up the play action pass. IJ Barima made a nice play defensively for the Falcons, and here's third down. Sprague, all kinds of th time, throws across the middle, pass is caught. Troy Mangan, the tight end, and they move the chains. It's a first down for Ohio. It's a nice job by Sprague, not getting uncomfortable in the pocket. Pressure's coming, but he hung right in there, found the open wide receiver. There's going to be holes in this secondary. That's just the way it is. They're not quite as apt right now in the defensive backfield. So if he can hang in that pocket, the offensive line can block enough for him. He can find some open wide receivers today. Mangan, both his dad and his uncle, are former Ohio University captains. Good chance they're probably here today. Option pitch to the short side to Olette. And not much running room for Olette. BG got a lot of hats to the football. Rocky, last week in the second half against UB, BG probably put together their best two quarters of defense all year. Well, they really have. Their, their last two weeks, actually, they, they've had some fourth quarter uh, three and outs, and they're at four last week in that game versus Buffalo. So this defense has been, uh, like I said, has been downtrodden all year, but they're getting a little bit of confidence now, especially from that last game. Well, that pass was too tall for his intended receiver. It goes incomplete. Trying to get that out to Brendan Cope. He was wide open. And this is the thing with Sprague, 49% completion passer. That, that ball has got to be on the money right there. That, that's Wide receiver was open. It's got to go to him right now. Again, Sprague is just a redshirt sophomore, but his accuracy has got to get better in this type of offense. Falcons showing blitz. Third down and 10. And here they come. Falcons rushing five. Sprague flushed out of the pocket. Got a good block from Olette. But he will go out of bounds short of the sticks. And so the Ohio offense will be forced to punt again. Well, you called it. A nice job of Olette picking up the blitzer on the corner right there. Or Sprague would have been dead. Decent job at least picking up some yardage before they'll be forced to punt. But again, a nice job. Second straight um, getting off the field here for Bowling Green. Mitch Bonstetter is in to punt this football. Bonstetter had a great punt last week at Central Michigan, a 53-yarder that pinned the chips back at the one-yard line. Burbrink is back to receive this kick for the Falcons at his own 14-yard line. Good look and punt. Fair catch called for and taken at the 10. So Falcons have the football back, and they're already up 14-0 on the road this afternoon at Ohio. Dino Babers has got his offense back out there on the field. First year as the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons. 4-2 and two record right now, and they control the top of the MAC East. They'll retain sole possession of first place with a win here this afternoon. Ohio, of course, would like to change that on this homecoming Saturday. Third possession for the Falcons. They begin at their own 10-yard line. Pass tipped. Well, check that. No, just dropped. 
Burbrink couldn't hold on, and it's second down and 10. And obviously that's a win for Ohio. As I said earlier, if you can get Bowling Green in second and long, that gives you a chance. It's, this offense really clicks when they can pick up four, five, six or more yards on first down. Going to keep this one on the ground in the middle of that D line is up to the challenge for Ohio and suddenly it's going to be third down and long. We talked about him earlier, but Antoine Crutcher, the defensive tackle for OU, has to have a big game. He was actually ranked the number 66 defensive tackle in all of college football by ESPN before the year, and he's got to have a big one. Got to plug up that middle, because if they get Travis Green going and Fred Kopp in that run, then, then you're getting the run, then you're getting the pass against you, and things can get ugly quick. That was the first carry for Coppett, third and long. Pass is caught. Well, a flag is down. 53 offense. So procedure penalty called against the Falcons. Penalties have been a bit of a problem for Bowling Green. They had 13 a couple weeks ago versus UMass. They're up at the top of the MAC in penalties. I, I think everyone, this is obviously Dino Baber's first year, a new regime. They're getting used to this Falcon fast that they call where they go really, really quick. And I think it's causing some of those penalties. I'd like to see those go down as they get more and more time together. Yeah, they're averaging all, just under 75 yards a game in yeah. penalties. They need to tighten that up. We've got another whistle. I was wondering if it was going to be a clock yeah, issue, and that was the case. And now we're set for play. Third and 16, we'll see if OU decides to bring pressure. Doesn't look like, looks like they're going to stay a base, probably a three deep defense here. Kanapke already is six of eight for 99 yards and a touchdown. Giving ground. And that's an incomplete pass. And in the middle of that uh, Frank picture. Frank Solis wants an illegal, uh, intentional grounding there. He may have a case. I don't think so. Travis Green was in there. He was close, but uh, he, he was close. Not not close enough for uh, for Frank Solis. <laughs> that's for sure. Let's take a look, get a look on the replay. Keep your eye on number eight. It was Ronnie Moore, number five, I think, that was streaking across. Yeah, I mean, look, that, that's within the realm, but uh, it was close. Again, uh, Frank Solis is going to at least argue his case. Joe Davidson. Line drive, short kick. Patterson takes it at the 39. Flag is down. Patterson still spinning. Finally gets down to the 27-yard line. But we've got laundry all over the field. Yeah, and unfortunately, you just blocks in the back on their, their return team. We'll get a look at it here. Even with a mark off, this is going to be good field Third position. Holding. Holding. Number eight on the CPT. Yeah. Ten yard penalty. First down, Ohio. Cochran whistled on the penalty, but when we come back, Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats are going to have good field position. They trail Bowling Green early, 14 0. 9 13 to go in our opening quarter. Ohio has got great field position for this possession. They will start from the Bowling Green 37-yard line. How about Frank Solich? Now in his 10th season at Ohio, still chasing that elusive MAC championship. And I'm still trying to chase Frank Solich. He was at Nebraska when I was at Notre Dame. They beat us my junior year. We were one and two of one versus two in the country. He's a one heck of a coach. All right, they fake the jet screen. Here's Sprague with the pass. Pass is caught. Down near the 12-yard line is number 12. That's Reed. Jordan Reed, the Richard sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, makes a big play. So, Ray, these receivers are finding some holes in this defense. This is all Sprague. Nice touch on his pass. Not a tremendously huge arm on Sprague, but very good touch finding Jordan Reed. Now, Reed, the last time uh, the Bobcats played at home, had a career-long 34-yard gainer against Eastern Illinois. This puts Ohio in the red zone. At, from the BG 13. Sprague, end zone throw, incomplete. We talked about Ohio wanting to establish a run, but I think, you know, they, they, they see some weakness, as really every team has this year, in Bowling Green secondary. They're going to try to take some shots on those cornerbacks and safeties for PG. Sebastian Smith was the intended receiver.
Fake it to Walker, short side pitch, Olet. And he'll take it down to the 11-yard line and no more. Gabe Martin came up from his linebacking spot, and just like that, it's third. And about eight, Ohio can get a first down at the Falcon Four. In this offensive line for Ohio, <laughs> Dave, when we talked to Coach Schultz during the week, we were reversing guys and putting guys were moving over. Ugh. It's a really a patchwork. This whole team in general for Ohio has had a ton of injuries on the offensive line, especially also on the defensive side of the ball. Trips to the top. Ohio showing a little bit of a pistol look here. Short slide, Sprague Olette. And he is going to be bumped out of bounds. He gets to the eighth, but that's going to be shy of the marker. A flag is down back at the 13-yard line. Legal formation, number 65, in the backfield, making five players in the backfield. Five yards, we put it down. I want you to watch number 14, I.J. Barima, the cornerback. Watch, he plays both the quarterback here and the pitch. It was a nice job feathering that thing out, playing both. That's a tough job, a tough duty on a cornerback. Played that well. So the Falcons will refuse the penalty, and the field goal team will come on for the Bobcats. Josiah Yazdani, 8 of 11 on the season. Of course, uh, the most memorable kick of the year. His game winner from yep. 44 yards out the first weekend at Kent State. Very interesting drive for Ohio. And there, look, now they got too many men on the field. Substitution infraction. 12 men in formation on the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. And Dave, a part of that is what we just talked about. The offensive line guys are switching positions. They got guys filling in, and that's what you get a lot of times is too many men on the field, not enough men on the field. But as I was saying, a very interesting drive for Ohio. One of their game plans is taking some time off the clock, and not much time went off the clock, and also they're going to be forced to just hopefully get a field goal here. Still talking things over after or the, the mark off. Bowling Green has not had a decline to penalty. It is still fourth down. Okay. Okay. So they'll get the ball a little bit closer to the goal line. And you know what Babers is thinking here. Yep. This is going to be a little bit more of a sharp angle. Right. This kick is going to come from the right hash. This will be a 25-yard attempt. Bonstetter is the holder. He's got it. So Yazdani snaked that one in just inside the left upright, and Ohio is on the board. Well, not exactly what Ohio won there, but they'll take it. At least they're back in the flow this game. They've gotten some positive plays going, made a few big plays in the passing game. You'd hate with that bad field, or the great field position they got there to start, to not get anything out of it. At least they got three. So field goal up and through. And the Bobcats are on the board, and it's 14 to 3. But you know, against this Bowling Green offense, you don't want to settle for field <laughs> yeah. goals. You've got to score touchdowns. Because they will score uh, at will. That's what they've done all year. As I said, close to 40 points per game is what this offense is putting up. And, and they're explosive, too. They have 54 plays of 20 plus yards on the year already, just a few games in. Ohio's just trying to get on track offensively after last week's game at Central Michigan. They had only 187 yeah. total yards in that game, only had 44 offensive plays. Yeah, in Central Michigan, and, and look, their, their front seven is one of the best in the entire MAC, but they really controlled that game last week versus Ohio. But I, I think Ohio, talking to Coach Solich th this week, I think they, you know, obviously Bowling Green's defensive front, front seven is not quite as stout as Central Michigan's. And I think they, th you know, think they have a real shot here today. Yazdani with the kickoff. Oh, my goodness. That's and this the worst one's gonna, penalty in football. This, in that's going to sail out of bounds. And you can see how unhappy he is about that. Yeah, so now they'll get the ball to the 35-yard line to start. On the kick, the ball will be placed 35-yard line. First down. And this is an offense you just can't afford, Dave, to give him one yard, let alone 15. Well, we've still got seven minutes to play on our opening quarter, and Bowling Green already has 106 <laughs> total yards. 
That's what they do. For exclusive offers on your next vehicle purchase, visit buyatoyota.com. Bennett and Stewart on the left side. McAuliffe at center, a redshirt freshman. Huddle and Logan Dietz on the right side, your offensive line for the Falcons. Play action. Pass is caught. Out to midfield, maybe to the 49-yard line. Reception by Ronnie Moore. Nice job selling the run by Kanapke and then pulls it out real quick and finds an open Ronnie Moore. Ronnie Moore, he tells Kanapke, I'm open every play. He says, I'm open every play, just like most great wide receivers say, Dave. I'm always open, and Kanapke always laughs about it. Blown this play dead. Looks like we may have had some movement on the offensive line for the Falcons on the left side. We'll see. Ronnie Moore, who just made that catch for BG, had two big catches now on the game-winning drive last week against Buffalo from 36 and 40 yards. All right, so the call goes against Kendrick Smith, 96. Yeah, you'll see right there just breaks the plane as that ball is being snapped there, as he said, unabated to the quarterback, and that's a free five for BG. Moves the football to the Ohio 45. Kanapke, straight back, no play action. Great protection. Fires. Incomplete. Burbrink was the intended receiver up at the Bobcat 35. And Burbrink was wide open. Kanapke knows it. he was very frustrated. As soon as that ball left his hand, he didn't, didn't exactly feel it. And that thing falls a few yards short and hits the turf. Four wide receivers, two to each side on second and five. And nearly picked off. That was Javon Johnson, the linebacker. He almost had it. He's a very athletic sideline to sideline linebacker. You see OU is in man-to-man -man coverage. Look at him undercut the route. and Looks like he may have gotten a piece of that ball. But these linebackers are what really makes this defense go. We talked about Blair Brown is out, but Quinton Poland and Javon Johnson are two excellent linebackers, two of the better linebackers in all the MAC. BG one of two on third down conversion attempts here early in the ball game. Kanapke to throw, knocked away, contact, no call, and it looks as if the Falcons are going to have to punt. Coming up and making a nice play was Devin Bass, the corner from Omaha. Yeah, Devin Bass was in on it and also Quentin pulling a nice job of really surrounding that the receiver before they could get the catch. Forcing a punt, that's what you got to do. And so Bass makes the play, and now Daz Patterson is back to receive this punt at around the 10-yard line for Ohio. And the last punt was, had a really low trajectory. So Davidson is on to punt the ball again. He's a tall drink of water. 6-7, <laughs> just a red-shirt freshman. High, but short kick. Oh, and look at that roll it's going to take for the Falcons. Inside the five, all the way down inside the one-yard line. And Daz Patterson knows it already, but he should have caught that ball. Fair caught it. They would have had nice field position, but now they're starting with their backs deep in their own end zone. That was Ronnie Moore on the special teams unit. Look how close that ball is to the goal line. Inside the one. Can't about, do it any better than that. How about Ronnie Moore? Great wide receiver, one of the better ones in the MAC, but also not you know, not too selfish. Goes and makes a very nice play on special teams, pinning Ohio back in their own end zone. So the Bobcats 99 yards away from the goal line, the BG goal line. Sprague. Fake the option. Now is going to throw the ball long. It's a battle for the ball. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Cochran. Ij Abira 
knocked it away. That's the second nice play that I.J. Barima has made in coverage here, which has been their Achilles heel here, not watch. The ball is in the air, times it perfectly, goes up, gets his hands in between Cochran and breaks that ball up. That's the kind of defensive back play, Dave, that this defense has been missing all year. They haven't had Ryland Ward in there, one of their all-max safeties, but I.J. Barima's really stepping up here today. Second down and 10. Sprague on the keeper with room, first down and more. Takes it all the way out near the 17-yard line for a 16-yard gainer and a badly needed first down for Ohio. Jay Sprague looked a little shaken up on that play, but a nice job riding the fake down. It's always a risky play in your own end zone, but a good job. And I don't think Sprague gets enough credit for how much of a dual threat he is. He does a nice job getting yardage with his legs, which is what we saw right there. Sprague, play action, protection is good, fires, pass caught, all the way out to the 40-yard line. It's Cope. And you can tell right now, Dave, I said that, oh, you need to establish the run. Well, BG knew that as well. They're really stacking the boxes, open up some opportunities on the back end. And Sprague is connecting. That's been the biggest difference. As I said earlier, Sprague has not been the most accurate guy under 50% completion percentage. But so far today, he's done a nice job hitting open wide receivers. All right, so from their own one, the Bobcats have moved the ball out to their own 40. Patterson on the carry, trying to follow his blockers. Give him a gain of maybe two. It'll be second down and eight. Even though they had some success in the past, they know they got to keep chipping away through the run game, try to push around this BG defensive front, as many other teams have had success doing all year. Patterson last week with Olet unable to go, rushed the ball a dozen times for 77 yards. Patterson has been a weapon. The problem is, you know, sometimes he's put the ball on the ground at times and just has some inconsistencies to him, but he's no question he's very explosive. Fake it to Patterson, Sprague rolling to the wide side, firing pass caught, it's Cope again. Stretches it out, and that extra effort is going to get him the first down at the Falcon 48. And I talked about Rylan Ward, the safety, who's now making his first appearance this year in a long time. Well, he's got a club on one of his hands he can't hold and watch. You see, it does a really uh, stops your ability to make tackles when you don't have one in your hands right there. So, uh... Cochran split out to the near side, first down and 10. Line of scrimmage officially the Falcon 49. Here's Sprague again going long. And Cochran was covered like a blanket back there, incomplete. Cochran has got to have a huge game today. He's, he's their big play guy in 35 games as an Ohio Bobcat. He has 15 receptions of 40 plus yards. He's a guy that they opened up the game uh, versus Marshall. First play of the game, boom, about a 50 yard bomb to him. So look for Sprague to find Cochran throughout the day. J.D. Sprague, 4 of 9 for 70 yards right now in this game. Second down and 10. Sprague rolling, throwing the ball back across his body, and that's a catch at the 42-yard line. That was a very, very tough throw to make. Aaron Bradley. Nice job of keeping with the play. When the quarterback is out the side of the outside the pocket, the coordinator always says run toward the sidelines up for the quarterback to find him. That's been waved off. Now they're going to call yeah. it incomplete. Yeah, it looked like that thing had hit. You can tell also Bowling Green is trying to pressure Sprague away from his throwing hand. That's about the third time we've seen him get pushed out toward his left, which obviously makes it harder on a quarterback to come back and throw the ball. Yeah. I didn't look like he had had control of that before the ball had hit. Third and ten. Bobcats one of three on third down conversions early in the game. No play action for Sprague. Fires. Good pocket. Threw that ball on wow. a dime. Nice catch. Sebastian Smith. So Smith and Cope getting into the early storyline of this one in the wide receiving core for Ohio. And how about the concentration? The ball initially goes through his hands there, but look at the nice job reaching one left paw up there and bringing that thing in for a much needed first down. Paw for Bobcat. I see what you did. <laughs> you like that? I like that. That's <laughs> From the 37. Somebody knows. <laughs> And this is going to go against Ohio. Ball start, 65 offense, five yard 
Well, Bobcats have already converted a couple of third downs in this game. They had no third down conversions in the first half last week in Mount Pleasant. Yeah, that was their undoing last week. Sprague, quarterback keeper, and that's going to work again. Going to take it down to the 35-yard line. Sprague didn't really get much of an opportunity to run the football last week. Ohio only had 44 offensive snaps. But Central Michigan did a really good job up front of, uh, of closing in on him, yep. keeping him uh, from getting outside and running. He ran the football very effectively here a couple of weeks ago against Eastern Illinois. Had a couple of touchdown runs in that game in addition to a touchdown pass. Second down and eight. Patterson in motion. Sprague fires. Caught to the 30-yard line, so it's still short of a first down. It's going to be third down and two. Another catch by Sebastian Smith. Now, other than the cornerback, uh, Jude I.J. Barima for BG, Ohio's having success against pretty much everyone else. I'd like to see some of those BG defenders start challenging some of these wide receivers a little more. You can't let a guy like Sprague just sit back there and play pitch and catch all day. Third and three. Two receivers to each side. Cochran's at the bottom of your screen. Patterson in there as the, the tailback. Option, Patterson. Can he get the corner? He's got the first down and more. Bumped out of bounds near the 22-yard line. It's another third down conversion for Ohio. And they're moving the football and controlling the clock. And part of it, too, is they're, they're doing a decent job of getting in third and manageable situations, but that's a good job by Patterson. Just finding the open, finding the open field there, getting the block, and getting forward for some nice yards. Good job by Cochran out there on the corner. Yep. Helping to plow the road. Inside of two minutes to play, opening quarter. Bowling Green leads 14 to three, but the Bobcats are driving. Here's a reverse. And it's defensed beautifully by the Falcons. Cope had nowhere to go. And Brian Sutton, the senior defensive back from Fishers, Indiana, brings him down. It was a nice play by Sutton, but it was also 99 Brian Baird, the defensive tack, or excuse me, defensive end. Nice job. You see it with a penetration, really just throwing a wrench into that play before it could get going. Saw Sutton there, number three. He's their team leader in tackles. Makes plays all over the field. So we'll see if that big defensive play short circuits this drive. It's now second down and 19. Sprague going to tuck it. 25, nice move, still on his feet. 20, going out of bounds inside the 15-yard line, and now flags come in late. We'll talk this one over, but it looks to go against Ohio. Mangan the tight end. 82. We'll see, and that's a shame because a nice job by Sprague of finding some open room. Gives the pump fake there and then puts his foot in the ground. There that's, was. Man, that's if if that's the play I saw there, look we'll see get another look at it here on the side. Uh, you know, he may have had, had, had a hand on his back, but he didn't really make much forceful contact, in my opinion. And he really didn't even need that no. block to get the first down. That would, that's ticky-tack, in my opinion. So from the 30 now, Sprague fires, short game, incomplete. <laughs> there's, there's number 14 again, I.J. Barima. Really playing well. So Cope can't hang on. It's going to be third down and long. We see number eight Cochran coming down here toward the bottom of your screen. He's their most uh, explosive wide receiver weapon. And man-to-man -man coverage. We'll see if uh, that's the guy Sprague goes to. Sprague to pass again. Now he'll tuck it and run it. Inside the 20 and brought down at the 19-yard line. And this is going to make it a much more manageable attempt for a field goal. Yeah, that was a nice job, at least picking up some yardage there. He was trying to go to Cochran, who was streaking down the seam there toward the corner of the end zone. Wasn't open, though, but again, nice job finding a little bit of space there, a little open window to pick up some yards and 
for a higher percentage field goal. All right, that's the end of the first quarter of play. We'll change ends. A field goal attempt likely coming next for Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats. Bowling Green scored touchdowns on their first two possessions, took advantage of a spread fumble for their second score. It's a homecoming Saturday in Athens at Peden Stadium. After one, Bowling Green, 14, Ohio, three. the second quarter Bowling Green with a 14 nothing 14 3 lead at Ohio 16th play of this drive that began at the Bobcat one yard line Yazdani is on for a second field goal attempt here of the game it'll come from the left hash this will be a 37 yard attempt and took six minutes off the clock which is good especially if they can convert here obviously you want touchdowns but got to keep that BG offense on the sideline as well Kick on the way. Good. So a 16 play drive results in a field goal. And it's 14 to 6. Well, like you said, I think Frank Solich will take that ball started on about their half yard line going all the way down. Obviously, they'd like to get in the end zone. A few penalties there late uh, forced them, uh, uh, made them unable to get a touchdown, keep that drive going. But again, you want to keep BG's offense, keep James Kanapke and all those guys, all those weapons at the wide receiver position on the sideline. That's the best defense out there. <laughs> So 16 plays, 79 yards, 6 minutes and 15 seconds come off the board for Frank Solich. You know, and after that uh, first furious offensive surge by Baber's offense, Ohio's defense has calmed down a bit. They, they despite really the have. fact that they're missing many of their key players today. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. Even Dino Babers talked about this week. This is a very disciplined, well-trained defense for Ohio. They don't make a ton of mistakes. They tackle very well. And Babers was even saying during the week, you're like, hey, we want to run this play. Then they watch the tape and say, well, no, we can't run that one. They're good at defending it. You try another one. And again, very fundamentally sound football team, fundamentally sound defense for Ohio. Yazdani line drive kick fielded on the fly at the 20 yard line across the 30 and up to the 33 yard line. Well, you don't see that very often. <laughs> that was a dream of, of every defensive lineman. Shan Smith, number 93, field that ball, uh, but they'll take it. Yeah, it was a knuckler going in there. Smith, a redshirt freshman from Chicago. Kanapke set to bring the offense back out. 7 of 13 for 114 yards and a touchdown so far. Now this offense, as we've seen, lots of short passes, quick game, passes to the outside part of the field. Some point, Dave, they're going to start taking some shots after they loosen that defense up a bit. Ronnie Moore has three catches already for BG this afternoon. They keep this ball on the ground. Short game, maybe a yard, and that's it. So not much running room for Green. Casey Sales was in there on the tackle. This is a defensive line that is missing. Brandon Purdom, he is out for this game. Here's Moore. Moore makes one man miss, and then one of the team leaders for the Bobcats defense, Josh Kristoff, came up, came up and made the stop. And Kristoff made one heck of a play right there, fighting off a block and staying on his feet and getting in on that tackle. That was a nice job. Wide receiver tried to block him, tried to take his legs, got stayed on his feet and made the tackle. Third down conversion attempt coming. And ball thrown away, and it's going to force the Falcons to punt. Fans want intentional grounding. I'd like to see where that receiver was because Travis Green was was bottled up on the inside. There was a good job by OU's defensive front, keeping him trapped inside in, in the interior part of that line. Patterson back to receive this punt. And you know he wants to make a good play here after he let the, the last punt go over his head and be down at the one yard line. Joe Davidson set the punt. High kick, nice punt. Patterson will watch this one go inside. Oh my goodness, he fields the ball and it spins out of there. 
So, oh my goodness, out to the 17-yard line. I don't think I've seen that this year. <laughs> and Frank Solich never wants to see that again. This is amazing. Look at this. Why? I, I, I'm speechless. I don't know what he was thinking on that play. Obviously, he wasn't thinking, but. All right, we're going to collect our thoughts here. <laughs> yeah, that. everybody. That was a bit of a shock to, to the system. <laughs> well, Bobcats have the ball. They trail it by eight. Four, or 14 minutes to go until halftime. 14-6 is the score. One more look at Daz Patterson and his unique take on this punt return. Now, the rule is usually coaches say if it's on the eight-yard line or, or in more, you don't feel the punt, especially when you got to run backwards for it. But, I mean, you have to imagine the last punt return was in Daz Patterson's mind where he should have came up and made the fair catch. But, obviously, you never want to go backwards, be running backwards, and then try to catch a ball inside the eight-yard line. <laughs> That's a, that was something else. Olette on the carry. And you can see that ankle is bothering yeah. him a bit. He doesn't have that, that same burst. I would say there's not quite the confidence in that thing because he had a little bit of room, had a little window to run through on that particular play if he could have that, broken that tackle. Give him a gain of three. 5'10", 195 pounds from Covington, Ohio. That's in the Dayton area. He played in Ohio's smallest high school division. Sprague. Here's Olette. And he'll take it out to the 25 yard line. As we talked about, a former walk on. Olette is. I like how he runs really low to the ground. You've seen it in previous games, Washington coming into this week here. Really gets his pads down low, runs behind his pads, as they say. When he's healthy, he's oh, surprisingly yeah. fast and surprisingly a strong runner inside as well. Absolutely third down here. Bobcats three of six on third down conversions here in the first half so far. Four wide receivers, two to each side. Olette remains in there. Play action. Pass is caught. And that is going to be a first down. Catch for Ohio is made by Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed's made a couple plays here today. But nice protection for the offense by the offensive line for Sprague. Just getting the ball, pitch and catch out those guys. As banged up as Ohio's offensive line has been this year, they've only given up one sack. And you can see that if you give Sprague time, he can complete some passes. So that's a first down. Another third down conversion, the fourth of the first half. Play is whistled dead. And this will go against the Bobcats. Ball start. Offense number 82. Five yard penalty. And if it wasn't for these penalties that, by, by the offense, they'd really be clicking right now. They've had a few penalties on first down, a couple on third down, that have really kind of stopped the drive going. But other than that, looking pretty good. Ohio now with the edge in total yards, 173 total yards to this point. If you remember, BG had over 100 yards in the first five minutes of this game. Spray. The protection is good. Pass is caught. Look at that. Fighting all the way out to the 45-yard line. That's going to be a first down. Nice catch. Sebastian Smith. And just too much cushion here. They're the defensive back, Nick Johnson, looks not even in the screen yet. We're, we're, I don't know where he's playing at. You can't give a receiver like that, like Sebastian Smith, that kind of, I mean, that was about a 10-yard cushion or more. Got to challenge those guys. So the Columbus native carrying tacklers out beyond the sticks. It's another first down. Ohio moving the football now at the 45-yard line. Olette did a really nice job reading and waiting to set up those blocks and takes it near the 49-yard line. That's going to be a gain of nearly four. Second down coming up. It's important. They'll take four yards on first down every day of the week. Ohio now starting to control the clock in this game as well. BG really stacking the box here. Look, they're coming after. Yep. Sending six. And the pass is caught. A flag comes in late. That's a first down to the 43-yard line. And Jordan Reed with another catch. But we'll see if this one's coming back. This may go against the Falcons. We'll see. Pass 
pass interference, offense number 82, blocking downfield. 15-yard penalty, replace second down. Ooh, a second major penalty in the first half for Mangan. That's huge. That wipes out a nice game. Man. Try to get a look at it. We'll see number 82, Mangin. And, and, and see, they call him downfield blocking, but he's just trying to get a release and get into his pass route because the defender was all over him. That, that, that's another bad call, in my opinion, by this, this crew here today. Second down and 21. Sprague right on the money to Cochran. And that's what Cochran can do. He can make you miss in the open field. He makes one man miss and picks up an additional five yards. Nice route, as we said, nice protection. And they're really starting to pick on number 13, Nick Johnson there, just a freshman. It's probably the third or fourth time they've gone his way here. Cochran to the top of your screen. Trips to the top on third down and 11. That was a 10-yard pickup. Sprague. Firing in traffic. Pass caught. That's going to be a first down at the 44-yard line. He was able to laser that one in there. Wow. That was not a very big window, but was able to get that in there to Mangan. And there's a couple guys in it, especially Gabe Martin. will watch the linebacker sheet number 11. He waits and waits. Oh, just outside the left hand of Gabe Martin. I talk about Sprague's been a, a little bit trouble with his accuracy at times this year, but so far today, he's been on the money. Mangan. Good job making up for the uh, penalty. From the 43-yard line. Pitch to the wide side. Olette takes it inside the 40. Yep. And we're going to get flags. So a late hit coming against the Falcons, and they'll be tacking on 15 more. Now that's a fifth year senior Gabe Martin making that play. How tough is it to stop when you get to the sideline? Well, it, it, it is tough and you know, but right there in today's football, they're going to call it. I mean, he, he's way out of bounds. He's got at least in that, in that situation defender when he gets that far, he's got to throw his hands up in the air and like say, hey, look, I'm not trying to bring this guy down. The momentum carried him out, but at some point he's got to let go of those hands. At the BG 23. Time of possession. Look at that. And that's the game plan right there because you're keeping the the offense for BG on the sideline. So Olette for two. Ball resting just outside the Falcon 20. All right, it's Gabe Martin. So we'll take a quick timeout. 9.03 to go, first half. Ohio trailing by eight, but driving. Gabe Martin, the middle linebacker for Bowling Green, was able to come off the field under his own power. Hopefully he's just shaken up and we'll be right back in there. Yeah, he had the ACL injury last year, fought all offseason to, to get back in this thing. Actually, last week moved him to middle linebacker. He's been an outside linebacker his whole career at BG, but they moved him to middle. As he recovers more from that injury, he had his best game of the season so far last year. Nine, nine tackles and interception. Pass incomplete. Mangan was open. Running right down the seam. Could not make the connection. So it's going to be third down and eight. And they tried to take advantage right there with Gabe Martin being out of the game, trying to hit something toward the middle of that field. Haven't called Landon Smith's name today. He is in the slot at the top of your screen. Sprague, end zone, incomplete. Fans wanted a flag. Cope was open. And Cope was open. He was thinking that, or he was trying to make a case that Nick Johnson had an arm wrapped around his waist. 
BG's defense, I'll tell you what, they've given up some yards and got down this area, but been very good in the red zone here, Dave. You know, if you really want to look at some of the numbers, they're, they're mind numbing. In the three road games earlier this year for the Falcons leading up to this game, they've been given up over 600 total <laughs> yards a game. This will be a 38 yard attempt. Yazdani going for his third field goal of the first half. And he missed it. Did not get the good foot into that. So the drive is for not, and the Falcons take over the football. Clayton, and we'll try to see the see the replay here. It's just right off the snap, did not look like it was heading in the right direction there. But for BG, you know, that's kind of their philosophy, Dave, is you know, they're a bend but don't break kind of mentality. They really kind of complement well with their offense. Offense is designed to get up quick, put up a bunch of points. And the defense is, hey, we'll give up a bunch of yards, but maybe not. But if we can keep them out of the end zone. Five minutes come off the, the clock. Oh, there. maybe a 11. case for some, some roughing there. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. 11 plays, 61 yards, five minutes off the clock, but no score. And now back beyond. And all the way down to the 20 yard line goes Roger Lewis. A perfectly thrown ball by Kanapke. And this is right out of the Dino Babers playbook. Sudden change, missed field goal. Let's go up top. As I said earlier, they were going to do. And they hit the wide receiver, Roger Lewis, down the sideline. Wow, and a face Man. mask penalty, too, on top of that on Wells. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal. This is going to move this ball inside the 10. How about the impact this year of Roger Lewis, a guy, true freshman, had 16 receptions versus IU, and that really kind of put him on the map. And so and since then, defense have tried to really shut him down and open up some opportunities for other guys, but he's still a big-time playmaker. Delayed draw, nothing working there. Maybe a half-yard gain, but no more. That was a slow-developing play. Fred Coppett on the carry. Second carry for Coppett. Second down and goal at the eight. Kanapke, end zone. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Ryan Burbrink, not going to look much easier than that. The big play to Lewis and then the touchdown pass to Burbrink. Well, you can see what a spread offense does, David. It's exactly that. They spread the field out wide, and when doing that, you create some open opportunities, lots of free space for the wide receivers. And then just a nice throwing lane. Good job of Kanapke getting the ball to his wide receiver, Burbrink. Extra point is up and good. Man, what a turnaround. Just seconds ago, Ohio was on the march with an opportunity to pull within a point. They miss on the field goal. They get the long pass to Lewis and then Burbrink with the touchdown catch. And BG's up 21 to six. Second touchdown pass of the first half for Kanapke and the Falcons extend their lead. 8.09 to go until halftime, 21 to six BG. Rocky Boyman, another look at the touchdown. Well, this is why they call it the spread. They use all 53 and one third yards of the field. As you can see, he spreads that defense out. And then from there, it's just the wide receivers finding little pockets of, of opening right there in the defense. And then it's up to Kanapke to hit him, which he does right there. Kanapke now. 10 of 17, 187 yards and two touchdowns. Anthony Farinella set to kick off. Well, that's a good kick. And it'll be a touchback. So the Ohio Bobcats here on the second Saturday in October as they celebrate homecoming, they have dominated the time of possession. But the Bowling Green Falcons are dominating on the scoreboard. 21 to 6, just over eight minutes to play here in the first half. Well, yeah, and as I was saying earlier, that I don't think Dino Babers is that concerned about the amount of yards given up. Yes, it looks bad on the stat sheet, but he'll take that 
every day of the week where, okay, we'll give up some yards, but you get in the red zone, you kind of tighten up a little bit. And also, as I said earlier in the game, when you can give up those yards but also get some turnovers, that's mm -hmm. the biggest difference. Get the ball back to your offense. It, team kind of reminds me of my, my Colts days. When, you know, Peyton Manning, we were designed to you get up quick on a team, get up by a couple touchdowns in the defense, bend but don't break, and get some turnovers and get the ball back to the O. From the 25-yard line, Sprague. Incomplete up at the 35-yard line. Sebastian Smith could not hold on. That was good coverage as well. Yeah, nice shot by Daryl Hunter. Breaking this ball up. Good break. Staying with the play. Hunter, redshirt junior from West Palm Beach. Three-year starter. Making up for lost time. Missed all of last year after a wrist injury that required surgery in fall camp. Second and ten. Patterson in there at tailback right now for Ohio. Sprague on the keeper. Trying to bounce this to the outside. And will go down at the 26-yard line. So third down and nine coming up for Ohio. Bobcats have controlled time of possession here in the first half, but here's a chance for the BG defense to get a quick three and out. And right now, J.D. Sprague is coming off the field. He looks injured. See him over there toward the top of your screen on the sideline. Yeah, Sprague's down. Sits down at the 30 or at the 25 yard line. It looks like his right hand is the way he's looking at him. If he take a, took a shot on that thing. And of course, he's in there for Darius Vick. And if he's going to be, he's going to be at least a play here. If he can't go, it'll be up to Greg Windham. I believe number 14. Try to see if we can see what happened. If he got his hand caught up. You know, it was the right hand. We'll see if something happens here toward the end. Ah, look, he just got a cleat, got stepped on mm -hmm. there by Paul Sen, the linebacker. And that hurts. I've had it happen many times, but I'm not a quarterback. If that's your throwing hand, you can tell that's that's going to be an injury that's going to mess with you a little bit. Yeah, that is his throwing hand. You have to imagine it gets stepped on. That thing starts to swell up a little bit. If he's going to try to get back in this game, he's got to keep that thing moving. And There's Vic with him. Yeah. So Wyndham will come in. And this is a tough spot to be put on the field in. Third and nine. Down 21 to six. Seven and a half to play. And Wyndham only has five passes in his career, all coming this season. He was two for three for 15 yards against Eastern Illinois late. That's his only throwing so far. He's a redshirt sophomore from Tampa. Blitz coming. Steps in, throws, incomplete. Now Jordan Reed was open, and it would have been a first down up at the 40-yard line. Yeah, it would have been a sure completion had he gotten it there. See Sprague frustrated on the sideline. Well, he's moving around over there. I think he's probably coming back in. Yeah, we'll the see. medical staff will get a look at it. But like I said, you know, if that thing gets swollen to the point where he can't hold on to the football, that's uh, that's not a good situation. Bonstetter set to punt the ball away. Line drive, short kick. It will take an Ohio roll and go out of bounds. And good field position coming for the Falcons. When you said earlier, Dave, how quickly things changed. Ohio's offense it was controlling time of possession, controlling the yardage in the game. They go down, BG holds them. They miss a field goal. Three plays later, BG is back on the scoreboard. And now with another opportunity here, with still seven minutes to go here in this half. Bonstetter with a 41-yard field goal, or a 41-yard punt, no return. BG sets up at their own 33. They've got the ball. They've got the lead. 21 to 6. Give you some other scores in the Mac here in just a moment. How about this? A double reverse. Wow. And there was just nowhere to run for Roger Lewis that time. And Wells came up and put him down. And they're sure happy to have Ian Wells back. He said missed a couple games because of, because of some injury. Missed last week. But look at this, runs the play down from behind. How about that? Came all the way from across the other side of the field. 
And Roger Lewis is not a slow guy, Dave. No, that was a not nice at all. job by Ian Wells. How about wow. the pressure? And the Bobcat defense on back-to-back -back plays. Looking real good. The Falcons trying to set up the screen. Got the ball out to Green, but a host of green-clad defenders were there to make the stop, led by Chad Moore, number 38. Moore, the weak side linebacker, getting it done in there for Blair Brown, who was injured last week at Central Michigan and not able to play today. Third and 15. Kanapke with room to run. But he does not make the sticks as he reaches the 36-yard line, and the Falcons will have to punt. Excellent stop there by Ohio's defense. Things are starting to sway toward the tide, toward the way of Bowling Green. The, the defense comes in, three plays, boom, 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 gets the ball back to their offense. Excellent job. I think it's going to be real interesting to see if Sprague comes back in there at quarterback after this punt. How, how many injuries can this offensive, can this team for Ohio take right now? Davidson, how about that? End over end kick. Patterson makes one man miss, gives ground, flag down, he's down. Everybody's holding their breath, including me, when Daz Patterson's back there. He's, you can tell he's thinking about things a little too much. Good tackle by Sutton. It was. I'll tell you, Ohio's had some issues on the punt team this in this first half. They really have. There it is. There it is. That's, now that's a clear block in the back. That's a no-brainer. Ohio's put together a nice long drive before. Let's see if they can do it again. Yeah, they're not getting much field position in this first half. They've already started one drive inside their own one. A drive that uh, lasted 16 plays and resulted in a field goal. Here they'll start inside their own 10, and Wyndham stays in there at the quarterback spot, and he is lucky to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. And, and you know, you can see the rep. You don't get the repetitions if you're the second or even now third team quarterback, really, for for Wyndham. That's a ball he should have given off to the to the fullback on that play. But now it looks like Sprague will come back into the game. Yep, there he is, number three. Other games in the MAC. Eastern Michigan leads Buffalo 16-13. Three minutes to go in the third. Five minutes till half. Well, three minutes until halftime. Akron at home leading Miami 15-6. UMass winning at Kent State 17-10. Late in the first half. That's a battle of winless teams there. Nice pass. First down out to the 28-yard line. Sprague looked pretty good on that throw as he was able to. Get that ball out there to Brendan Cope for a nice gainer. Well, Sprague's been good in the pocket, but he's also been very good here today with this, just keeping the play alive, extending the play, allowing those wide receivers to create some separation. Boy, they're sure happy to have him back in the game. Sprague, 10 of 20 for 135 yards here in the first half. He was a 7 of 21 for the game in a losing effort last week at Central Michigan. First and 10 from the 28. Just over four minutes to go here in the first half. Pass caught, 35-yard line. That's going to be a gain of seven. Another catch by Brendan Cope. So it's really been an interesting mix of uh, receivers doing the heavy lifting here in the game today. Cope, Sebastian Smith, Jordan Reed. Well, and you pointed out earlier, you can tell Olette's not quite, you know, fully into it. You know, he's got that ankle injury. It looks like it's visibly bothering him, but they've had a lot of success in spite of that through the passing game. Both teams have their full complements of three timeouts as we get close to halftime. Going to keep this ball on the ground. Olette will take it out near the 36-yard line before he's thrown back by a host of Falcon tacklers. Beatty's Ryland defense, Ward, yeah. number 15, led the led the group. Again, I'm very impressed with their defensive front. I said earlier, they, they you know, a couple games this year, they've really gotten pushed around in the run game. Done a nice job here so far today. Olette, and he finds some success as he goes off the right side. 
right behind the guard. And that's a first down for Ohio. And Ohio saying, man, those third downs are sure are easier to pick up when they're third and three and not third and nine or more like they were last week. Sprague's numbers up to the moment. Ohio out to their own 40 with a first down. Nice hole. Olette out to the 46-yard line, so that's a gain of five. We've got to point out, I do not see Gabe Martin, their stud middle linebacker, has not made his way back mm -hmm. in this ballgame. Second in the long four. Here's Sprague. Play action fake. Lots of contact at around the 30-yard line. No call. Mangan was the intended receiver. And here's he Ron Ward. Ward. That left hand, with, he's got the club on it. It's been the, the wrist hand injury he's had most of this year. This is his first game back here in about the last three or four. So it's going to bring up third down and a long four. Incomplete pass stops the clock with two minutes and three seconds till halftime. Ohio 6 for 11 on third down conversions here in the first half. They came into play today 38% on the season in third down conversion attempts. Option wide side, Olet. And it depends on the spot. I think he's got the first down. I think they're going to give his four progress to get the first down, yeah. What well, touchdown would be big for Ohio right here before halftime. Option the defensive end and Olette. Good job of as that play was starting to go east west. Good job of getting north south quick. Hit the ground and hit the ground. Pass is incomplete. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. The umpire signaling incomplete. Pass oh, look at <laughs> Wow. You overrode the call there, Dave. Get another look at this to see who was right. Uh, the umpire was right. It did hit the ground. Yeah, it did. It went through his hands and hit the ground. And he had the better angle one in his defense. Still always funny to see one official <laughs> signaling a catch while the other is saying incomplete. I like the conviction now. Sprague cut from behind. Sack time. First sack of the game. I.J. Barima. <laughs> He's made plays all day in the passing game, but now finally gets to the quarterback. I.J. Barima on a corner blitz, staying with the play, pull Sprague down, huge loss of yardage. Now for Ohio, he's facing a third down and about over 20. Looks like 20 yards to go. Kind of surprised that the Falcons aren't using a timeout here. Yeah, I, I'm with you here. Third and 20. They have three of them. Sprague. Checks down to his tight end. Mangan takes it out to midfield, but it's going to be fourth and ten, and looks like Ohio will punt this ball. Now they call a timeout. But I'm with you, Dave. That would have been about a minute 12. About another 20 seconds or so that he could have saved. Of course, they obviously have the ability to score in, in a minute, but uh, you like to give your offense the most time possible. So Bowling Green now with two timeouts remaining here in the first half, 55 seconds. Stick with us at halftime, our Capital One halftime report. Got some good stuff in it today. We're going to take a closer look at Notre Dame quarterback Everett Golston. And Amari Cooper, the big play wide receiver for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Yeah. Plus, we'll have first half highlights and statistics. There's Dino Babers. I actually had the privilege of calling one of his games last year when he was at Eastern Illinois. He had some quarterback by the name of Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. And we, we got to spend some time with him that week and watch him play. And I, I thought I was in on the biggest secret <laughs> in the entire country. And obviously, the New England Patriots saw something in Garoppolo. He's their quarterback of the future. He looked pretty good in uh, some limited he duty did. in that uh, game against the Chiefs. Absolutely. He, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I spent some time with him last year. Tremendous young man. Great, great fake. fake. It's a fake. Mangan stretching it out. And it looks like he's going to be just short. Needed 10, got nine and a half. Man's it on the carry. 
It's obviously a tough play on when you got 10 yards to go. And he oh, almost got it, dragging some defenders. Oh. Wow. One more step, he would have had it. Yeah, in, in, in defense of Frank Solis here, he's saying, you know, that they can go 99 yards for a touchdown. They, they can go 60 yards for a touchdown. They have that quick score capability, so why not take a chance? I like the call. Kanapke with the pass to Lewis. And Lewis goes out of bounds after a short gain. Give him a gain of three. Well, make it four. It'll be second down and six. 44 seconds left. Falcons with two timeouts. Second and seven. Ohio's had the ball for 21 minutes here in the first half, and they trail by 15, 21 to 6. Kanapke, all kinds of time, incomplete. At the Ohio 45, trying to slip that one to Roger Lewis, the former Ohio State commit. You can tell Ohio right now, they're not, they're usually rushing three guys up there. They had Terrell Basham, their best defensive end, dropping into coverage on that play. Now they're bringing the pressure. Here comes the blitz. Kanapke sends this one long for Lewis. It's incomplete. And we got a flag down at the 45 yard line. An eligible receiver downfield. Number five was covered on the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. All right, 31 seconds and fourth and seven. a pretty good defensive first half yeah. for both of these teams actually I mean the way Bowling Green has been playing defense this year they have to feel really good about the fact that they've kept Ohio out of the end zone here in the first half well, absolutely a team like Bowling Green who can score that fast and with, with that much much explosiveness you got to feel pretty good last thing you want to do is go down five scores going into halftime Davidson with a little rugby kick action Patterson is gonna let that ball go by him He's had a problem on the punt team today. <laughs> well, all the way down near the three-yard line. And, and I've talked to those guys. A lot of times just one thing gets in your head out there, and you start thinking about this or thinking about that. And, yeah, he's had a little bit of a tough time here. But at least he's not giving up a, a huge play. No, and, that's right. You know, and drop the ball or giving up a turnover or anything. 18 seconds left. How about how many drives has Ohio started from inside their own 10-yard <laughs> line in this first half? I'm counting at least three. That's an excellent point, Dave. I mean, they're not really getting it to win the field position, at least in the special teams game, for sure. Now, here's the question. How many of these fans are going to hang in for the second half after the marching 110 performance at the break? Good they crowd. better. They're, their team's in this game. Their defense is playing well. Their offense is playing good, too. They've just kind of stalled in the red zone. But other than that, doing well today. Olette. Short side goes out of bounds, stops the clock. 13 seconds left in the first half. For Olette, that was his 13th carry of the first half. Second two, Ohio. I got him unofficially with 13 carries for 45 yards. Here he comes again. And that should be the final play of the first half. And it is. So the first half is over. Bowling Green scored two touchdowns very quickly, converting an Ohio turnover into a one-yard rushing touchdown. The Falcons, or the, rather the, the Bobcats, after that, controlled the time of possession but couldn't get the touchdowns. And as we go to the break, the Falcons in this Mac East division battle with a 21 to 6 lead on the Ohio Bobcats. Our Capital One halftime report is coming up. Second half still to come here from Athens, Ohio as well. We're at the break. Falcons 21, Ohio Bobcats 6. And welcome back to Peden Stadium, Athens, Ohio. Mid-American Conference play this afternoon live on ESPN3. Good day to be out in the sun. Just an absolutely gorgeous day. Great day for fall foliage. Here we are, Rocky Boyman calling this game on the, uh, the banks of the Hocking River. Great big crowd on hand, homecoming. 
They were happy with the performance at halftime from the marching 110. Frank Solich not uh, worried about the band, though. He's worried about coming back <laughs> in, in the second half against the Falcons, trailing right now 21-6. to Well, this crowd's getting treated to a nice game here. It started off looking pretty ugly. BGSU got up 14 to nothing with not even four minutes gone into the game. You're saying, oh, here we go. But Ohio's really, outside of those first couple of scores, controlled this game. They have more yards than Bowling Green. Um, you know, just in, in, in really, can, and obviously the, the time of possession is what's really been key, keeping Bowling Green's offense on the sideline. They like those shoes on Farinella. <laughs> get your attention, don't yeah, they? Yeah, you see him. Sends this one down the field. Ohio won the toss, deferred to the second half, so they'll get the ball first. Here comes Daz Patterson across the 10. And a good job by the special teams unit on the kickoff team for Bowling Green as they stop him shy of the Bobcat 20. Stats in the first half. Look at the time of possession. Ohio leads in total yards as well, but it's BG leading on the scoreboard. Well, if you ask Ohio what their game plan was coming into the game, it was that last column right there controlling the time of possession. They've done a great job of that. Bowling Green's defense, though, has done a good job in the red zone holding them, forcing field goals instead of touchdowns. Penalties were a problem for the Falcons last week at home against UB, but this afternoon only two penalties for 20 yards as we start the second half. J.D. Sprague back at quarterback for Ohio. Play action pass on first down across the middle. That pass is incomplete at the 32-yard line. Robbie Walker tried to sell it, but it's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Well, they're sure happy to have J.D. Sprague back there. Remember in the first half, he went down. He had a, someone, had, uh, Jordan, excuse me, Paul Sennett stepped on his hand. He went out for a couple plays. Didn't know if he was going to be able to come back, but he's back in the game. He's looked pretty sharp ever since. Maybe I want to take a look at this. On the previous play was an incomplete pass. Play is under further review. All right, so we're going to take another look at that. Robbie Walker was the intended receiver, a freshman from Reston, Virginia. Really excited about his potential in this Ohio program. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, I think that was a catch, Dave. It, it, the ball had popped up, but he pulled it back into his body before it hit the ground. Looked like to me on that replay. He had his first career catch at Central Michigan last week for 17 yards. He was a three-star prospect coming out of high school, according to ESPN.com. Take another look. Yeah, see if we can see from this angle if it was any different. Ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Second down. down. And it, you know, it's one of those that's hard to tell. And if you, unless you see something really pop off the replay there, they're not going to overturn it. Now, here's something that's kind of unique about Walker. He wants to be a fire marshal. <laughs> you ever heard no any player These are you the ever? most hated guys in the world, the fire <laughs> marshal. They come in your business and tell you what you can't do. <laughs> he wants to be a fire marshal. Second down and ten. Blitz coming from BG. Sprague got it away. Oh, my goodness. Nearly a one-handed grab by Cope. Brendan Cope was reaching out there with his right hand and nearly pulled that one in. And Brendan Cope didn't even see the ball in the air till right at the end and still almost came down with the play. I mean, right now, Brendan Cope doesn't know. Just now he looks up and finds it in the air. Oh, oh. my goodness, almost comes down with a nice one-handed catch. That would have been a circus catch. Third and ten. Ohio didn't have a first uh, third down conversion at all last week. They're 7 of 13 on the game this afternoon. You see Gabe Martin, the middle linebacker, back in the game. They're sure happy to have him on the field. Blitz coming. Sprague steps up. Avoids the traffic. Throws. Nearly intercepted. Incomplete. Was checking down and trying to get that ball to Olet. Yeah, and Sprague is really lucky that they did not intercept that ball. It's always those late throws over the middle, Dave, that usually get quarterbacks in trouble. And it was Gabe Martin on the pressure. Forced Sprague up in the pocket. Threw across his mm. body. And... How many times have you seen them? Those are usually the ones that get picked off. You know, Falcons dealing with some injuries as well. We've detailed Ohio's injuries. James Sanford in there at one of those outside linebacker spots, taking over for D.J. Lynch, who's unable to go today. Yeah. Von Stetter back to punt. High short kick. Fair catch called for at the Falcon 45. 
Burbrink, who has a, a touchdown reception in this game, makes the fair catch. And good field position for BG as they start their first offensive set of the third quarter. You really got to give a lot of credit to the special teams of Bowling Green. They, you know, Ohio's made some mistakes. Daz Patterson's misplayed a few balls and made a couple bad decisions. I feel like most of this game has been played as you're looking at the screen on the right side of the 50. At least the last couple couple quarters. Kanapke's numbers. I want to talk a little bit more about him on this possession. Rocky, I like what I see from Kanapke. From the 45. Going to start off with a handoff to Coppett. And he negotiates his way up near the 48-yard line for a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Kanapke is the first high school quarterback in Indiana history to win three straight <laughs> state championships. So he's used to winning. Hit as he throws. Pass incomplete up at the 40-yard line. Was trying to get it to a diving Roger Lewis. When, as we said in the open, he took over for Matt Johnson, who was one of the best players in the entire MAC last year. And Bowling Green team that won the MAC. In 2013, starting off the season, new high-powered offense. Got Matt Johnson, got, got Gallon, the wide receiver, and both those guys go down in the first game. But credit James Kanapke for being ready and really just picked up right where this offense left off. He's a really a cool customer out there. He's got good body language, throws a nice ball, and it was nearly intercepted there. He's throwing a nice ball until that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nearly intercepted. Brett Layden who was back in there this week for Ohio. Blake Scipio also returning uh, for the first time this year available in the defensive secondary for Ohio. So it's three and out. Another three and out for Ohio's defense. Davidson sends it down the field. Fair catch called for at the five-yard line by Daz Patterson. So Ohio back up against their own end zone again. Field position. They haven't had it today, and they trail BG 21-6. The homecoming court on homecoming Saturday here at Ohio. Bowling Green has the lead 21-6. Bobcats have the football back. 13-51 to go here in the third. Bowling Green win today, and they continue to hold sole possession of first place in the MAC East. Ohio with a victory in this game. They will continue to control their own destiny. I mean, they've had some rough moments. Both of these teams have had some pretty curious moments this season. But if Ohio could manage to come back and win this game, believe it or not, they still control their own destiny in the east side of the MAC. Well, you're right, and especially considering all the injuries they've had to the offensive line. The quarterback, Darius Vick, starting the year, he goes down. And it's still worth pointing out that who would have thought that a Bowling Green offense that's averaging, what, about 350 yards per game, you know, is, is now has is left with just 203 here in the first half. How about a little uh, comment or two about BG's defense? Excuse me, Bowling Greens are averaging 500 yards of, of offensive game, and now just at 200 here in the first half. Their defensive numbers, though, coming into this game, oh my God. ugly, giving up 578 yards of total offense. Announcement to make when Bowling Green or Ohio is on the line of scrimmage, the band must stop playing music. Fans don't like that. <laughs> now they want to know, was it Frank Solis that had said that, or was it? Was it you know, that one guy wants to throw a challenge flag. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't our guy. Our guy didn't say that. <laughs> Frank Solis smiling. All right, first and ten for Ohio. Hand off to Walker on the jet sweep. Patterson with a nice block, and there he goes down the sidelines. It was able to stay in bounds. Now, flag is down back at the 15-yard line. This, this may be coming back, but he took it all the way out to the 37. Ohio trying to find ways to get him the football. This is on Ohio. This is their 10th penalty. He's killed them today. 
Man. Jordan Reed, the guilty party, number 12. See if we can get a look at it out here. Previous spot. Yeah, as you see right there, yeah. when you get outside the, the framework there, as the, the defender starts to pull away, you got to let go of that hand. So instead of a big gainer, Ohio's still back inside their own 10 yard line. Patterson shifts behind Sprague and will try to get the corner on the wide side. Knocked out of bounds at the eight yard line. Daz wanted a face mask call. As nice. he was tossed out of bounds by Sanford. Nice job by the linebacker Sanford. You see number 35 getting rid of the block and then running oh. the play down from behind. He may have touched that face mask. Good job being a sideline to sideline linebacker by Sanford. Third down and 10. On third and long. Rushing with five. Sprague picks up that corner blitz, 15, 20, first down and out of bounds. That'll get it, a 16-yard gain for Sprague. And I love the vision by Sprague. They late rolled to a blitz, brought it to Sprague's left side. Credit him for seeing the, the, seeing the play develop right there. Picks it up in the presence of mind to get outside. Sees no open wide receiver and a lot of green in front of him. Picks it up with his legs. Sprague now 10 carries for 70 yards in this game. And just a redshirt sophomore. He's made a lot of great decisions here in this football game. Sprague will tuck it and run it again. And is out to the 32-yard line. That's a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Sprague has really grown as a quarterback, in my opinion, here in this game. Again, making some good decisions. His accuracy has been better. Closing in on 250 yards of all-purpose yardage. Patterson on the carry, and he's going nowhere. He was ran right into the waiting arms of number 43, Brian Thomas, the fifth-year senior defensive end from Washington, PA. If you look at the replay out of the pistol. Third down. Said it earlier, this Bowling Green defensive front's done a nice job of building a wall up there so far in this game. Thomas sees red when he sees green. He had two sacks against Ohio here at Peden Stadium two years ago. Sprague throwing up to the 48 yard line as he was able to get that ball in there. Not a very big window to work through, but Sebastian Smith has had a breakout game catching a football for Ohio today. What a great job by Smith catching the ball at the high point and finding a way to come down inbounds. Good presence of mind to get that one foot down. Like you said, Dave, he's had a great job. Kind of a, a breakthrough performance for Smith. Four catches, 50 yards on the game. Moved the ball out to the 48. Sprague to throw again. Pass is caught. A first down at the BG 38. Got that ball to Walker. The freshman Walker. Walker really found some, some openings there in the middle part of that field, about the 10, 15 yard range. And Dave, we've got to point out here, just noticed AJ Olette has not made an appearance so far yet this mm -hmm. half. You got to wonder if that right ankle he's had some problems with started to stiffen up a little bit at halftime. He had 14 carries for 47 yards in the first half. From the 38, Patterson. And this time, tried to turn it back inside and ran right into the traffic. No gain. Second and ten. Patterson's not, not the biggest guy. He's listed at 5'7", but a lot of times, Dave, the small guys, they can hide behind those offensive linemen and find some holes. Sebastian Smith to the top of your screen. Four wide, two to each side for Sprague. Patterson is a sidecar to his right, and now he breaks away from the formation. In and out of the hands of Walker. He had the first down at the 23. 
and now it's third and ten. Walker got behind the linebacker, Sen had a little bit of a window for Sprague to give him the ball, but they couldn't connect. Eight of 15 on third down conversions. Here's Sprague, and Patterson couldn't hold on. That wasn't the easiest catch in the world either. Yeah, ball, if the ball had been put on the money, he might have had a chance. Offense is staying out on the field on fourth and 10. Check out the replay. As you can see, just a little bit behind, behind Patterson, he hit, he hit him in stride, at least could have gotten a couple yards and made this a fourth and five instead of now fourth and 10, but you're right, Dave, they're gonna go for it. Fourth down and 10 from the BG 38. Look to bring the pressure off the bottom of the screen. Falcons going to rush five, and they get the sack all the way back at the 45-yard line. Coming off the corner, a beautiful play defensively. James Sanford led the charge, and the ball is going to go over to the Falcons on downs. Well, Dave, not only do they not convert, but they also lose 15 yards. Great play. Impact play by this Bowling Green defense. Sanford with the sack. The Falcons have the ball, and they've got the lead. 9.57 to go, third quarter. Bowling Green leads at Ohio, 21-6. Rocky Boyman, let's take another look at that Falcon blitz on that fourth and ten. Well, I love the call here. The defensive line slant to the left, and Gabe Martin comes up the middle when his Sprague tries to escape. He goes right into the arms of James Sanford, the outside linebacker. Just a great job of coordination on that blitz. Again, Martin, pressure up the middle. Sanford takes him down from the outside. Kanapke to throw on first down. Pass is caught. Burbrink makes one man miss and takes it down to the Bobcat 36. That's a gain of 14 and a first down. Nice job by Lewis blocking on the outside and really sprung that play. And they're right back up to the line of scrimmage. Pass is caught. Roger Lewis. Minimal gain though, a one yard gain. And Quinton Poling, the middle linebacker, closed that thing down very quickly. We weren't sure if he was going to play today or not. He has got great speed at that middle linebacking spot. Redshirt freshman from Spencerville, Ohio. Second and nine. Kanapke on the play action. Finally cuts it loose. Pass caught. Depends on the spot. If they give him the forward progress, this might be a first down. Heath Jackson, that's his second catch today. It looks like they are going to give him the four progress either replay. There's nobody out on. It looks like looks like Kristoff had lost sight of, of Jackson there for a second. And when he did, Nat Kanapke hit him. Kanapke rolling to the wide side. Pump fake. Still got it. Finally throws out of bounds. Just threw it away. Yeah, smart decision there not to force that ball. Ohio had pretty good coverage. You know, this series could be the game for Ohio if Bowling Green gets a touchdown here. Bobcats already trailing 21 to 6, and they've had trouble. They've moved the football. They've controlled the time of possession, but have not scored a touchdown today. Yeah, you know, the, the Bowling Green's really shut them down here once they got close to the red zone. But as you said, critical play here, critical drive for Ohio. Second and 10. Blitz coming. Got the pass away, and that's going to be intercepted. Kristoff takes it right off the turf. Back at the 11-yard line, had to wait for the signal, and the interception by Josh Kristoff. And who was it with the pressure? Look at Poling, the linebacker, runs over the running back and forces Kanapke into a bad throw. Wow. Quentin Poling. Like you said, Dave, it was questionable whether he was even going to play. He has some injury issues. Going to watch this right up the middle. Boom, right over top of Travis Green. He's the one that made that play happen. A good job by Kristoff securing that football. Man, Pulling's a good player. Just a red shirt freshman. He had a game versus Idaho. Three interceptions mm -hmm. in that game. And here making a big time play as well. Yeah, he's still got the majority of the interceptions for Ohio. That's just their fifth on the season. Sixth forced turnover of the year. Man, as a former linebacker, I, I love that stuff there. Running over a running back, getting to the QB. I'll take it. Sprague. Finally throws on the run incomplete. He was lucky to get that ball away. There's Pulling. No foul for grounding. Quarterback without the ball. 
He said, hey, coach, call that blitz again, man. I like that one. <laughs> he just looks like a linebacker. Ohio's got the edge by more than 100 total yards in this game right now, 335 to 231. But they trail 21 to 6 midway through the third. I'm Ohio, I gotta find Chase Cochran. He's my biggest play wide receiver. Olette had nowhere to go. Well, it was at least good for Ohio to see Olette back in there. We did not see him that entire first drive. We wondered if he was hurt or was gonna get back in this game. He is. But no, no question, Dave. We, we talked about it earlier. That ankle looks to be didn't quite look the his same explosive mm. self out there today. That was his 15th carry, a two-yard loss. Third down and 12. Big third down for both these teams. See Cochran coming to the top of your screen. Four wide, trips to the top. Sprague trying to set up a screen. Now he's going to run it. And a good open field tackle is going to drop him at the 13-yard line. Hunter comes up and makes the play, and the Bobcats will have to punt. And Sprague's been very dangerous running the football. Goes through his progressions, doesn't see anything. A little bit of a hole opens up, but watch this out of nowhere. Bam. Nice tackle. That's what you got to have out of, your, out of your cornerbacks. You want your corners to cover, but in today's football, especially with a lot of the spread, the way quarterbacks are running around out there, your corners got to be able to tackle. Falcons should have good field position here. Burbrink is back at midfield. Bonstetter sends this one high kick. Fair catch called for at the 42. 7.23 to go, third quarter. Bowling Green's got the ball back, and they've got the lead midway through the third. 21-6 at Ohio. Mitch Bonstetter, the, the punter for Ohio on the sidelines, just sent that one down the field. BG's got the ball and good field position. They'll start from their own 42-yard line. They've got a 21-6 lead. Pressure in the face of Kanapke. It doesn't matter. Burbrink takes the football and goes out of bounds at midfield. It's going to be a gain of eight. Nice job of Kanapke hanging in there with the pressure coming in his face, being able to complete, complete the football. Right back over the ball. Pitch to the short side. And Travis Green is bumped out of bounds. BG really hasn't rushed the ball very much today. I would say Travis Green's had a very quiet day. BG's got 24 rushing yards for the game. And he'll take it for a yard, and that's all down to the 45-yard line. How many times can Ohio's defense do this? You know, I mean, just stopping this, this high-powered offensive attack so far, they have no signs of quitting them. You can see that Ohio's shuffling personnel showing blitz. And we'll see, but this looks to go against the Bobcats. Offside. Defense number 93, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. And it was all for Kanapke, that staggered snap count. That was the key. Yeah. I was doing a good job of pressuring Kanapke. Don't have a sack on the day, and, and a lot of that's because of the design of the offense. The ball's coming out in two seconds or less. It's hard for those, those defensive ends, those pass rushers, to get there and bring Kanapke down. Sales and Basham in there at defensive ends right now for Ohio. Pass caught. Not a first down. That's going to be a gain of about four to the Ohio 37. Again, it's Roger Lewis. Dino Babers was just raving about the progress that young freshman from Pickerington, Ohio, has made since coming into the Bowling Green Pro program. That is a rush for a first down to the 33-yard line. Travis Green getting a little work on this on this series. If I'm Bowling Green, I'm finding more ways to get Travis Green the football, whether it's out of the backfield in a pass, run, whatever. He's a playmaker. He's already scored a touchdown in this game, scored the first one for the Falcons. Another short pass completed up to the 30-yard line. 
And that's what you got to do as the defender with these high tempo, quick offenses. They're going to catch some balls, but you got to limit the yak. You got to get them down before they can get some yards after catch. That's a, Ohio's done a nice job of that all day. Keith Jackson on the carry, on the on the catch rather, passes incomplete. Lewis tried to sell it at the 24-yard line, but it was a one-hopper. Kanapke, 18 of 32, 228 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Third down conversions, you've seen BG. How about that? Only one of seven, actually two of eight. The spot last time, they like the middle blitz by the linebacker pulling. There you go, off to the races. Inside the 10, into the end zone for a touchdown goes Travis Green. Green goes untouched on the draw on third and seven for a Falcon touchdown. Well, that's what they did. They brought the linebacker pulling just like last time, but when you bring a linebacker, there's no one on the second level. That's a great play call by Dino Babers, recognizing Ohio was probably going to go back to that blitz in that area of the field, hands the ball to Green, lets him do the work. So a 30-yard touchdown run by Green. And the Falcons extend their lead over Ohio to 28 to 6. Look at this, never touched. Picked it up, and like you said, never, there's no one in the whole second level. And again, you see the vision by Travis Green, knows when to cut the football back. Like I said, he's a playmaker. Get the ball in the hands of your playmakers and let them make some things happen out there. You see Travis Green, 2,100 yards. Just getting up there in the school history. Again, as I said earlier in the, in the broadcast, he was a guy, I remember, going into last year, that he was a wide receiver. Like, ah, you know, we, they had a suspension <laughs> of a running back. I forget who it was, but, man, who, who are we going to get to run the ball? Well, we got this Travis Green character. Let's see if he can do it, and he's done a great job. Yeah, almost rushed for 1,600 yards last year. Yeah, that was a school record, too. He's got 12 career 100-yard games. May not get there today. Seven carries, 44 yards, and a touchdown. Has a receiving touchdown in the game. 28 to 6, BG with the lead. That is their largest lead of the afternoon. You know, Ohio still has a chance. They've had some success throwing the football today. They just gotta have some consistency and put some put together some multi-play drives here. From the goal line. Patterson, 20, 30, and out near the 38-yard line. So good kickoff return by Daz Patterson. This was a few times this afternoon I can remember Ohio starting to drive outside their own 10. Well, and that's key. I, absolutely. You got a little more breathing room. You're not backed up in your own end zone. That's a great way to inject some energy back in your football team before they take the field. Well, Ohio now trails by three scores. Sprague on the play action fake. And he's going to send this one long for Cochran. It's a battle for the football back inside the 15 yard line. Fans want a wow. flag, no call. That looked to me like there was some contact down there. They definitely had a case. Let's see, that was Daryl Hunter on Cochran. Let's see if it shows up. Mm. You know, if they're both going for the football, they always, you know, look, the defender has the right to the football the same as the offensive player does, but he was he was getting some, some pulling on the back of the jersey, on the back of the shoulder pads. I thought that should have been a penalty. Second down and 10. Sprague. To the near side, pass is caught. Sebastian Smith pulls it in, up at the 46-yard line, so it's going to be third down and three. Let's take a look and see if we can see the, the interference. I mean, look, he's got his right, his left hand is on the jersey the entire time there, pulling down on Cochran, who's trying to go for the football. That should have been a penalty. Patterson goes in motion to the wide side. Short pass. And that's going to be a first down up at the 49-yard line. Catch made by Sebastian Smith. Smith now with six catches on the game. Smith has six catches, Cope with four, Mangan with three.
Sprague now over 200 yards passing. 17 of 36, 215 yards. But still no touchdowns. Sprague going long again. Tipped and then nearly caught. It's those same two combatants, Hunter and Cochran. And Hunter nearly picked this off. Yeah, we see Cochran all the way from the start. And he's their home run threat guy. This time, Daryl Hunter, nice job. He got a little bit of hand contact, but I'm not upset about that. But look, Cochran oh, almost <laughs> comes back up with it on the second, third try. Sprague airmails that one for Smith, and it'll be third and ten. The ball was a little too high. Wind has picked up a little here at Peden Stadium. An injured Falcon defender down at the 46-yard line. I think that's the cornerback, I.J. Bream, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, sure. you got that right. Not sure what happened to him, but... I.J. Barima is down, fifth-year senior from Columbus. What a fantastic game he's had. A couple pass breakups, had the blitz once. He's had a great game. And this secondary needed a great game. Their secondary has been pretty absent all year, especially without Ryland Ward. He's really stepped up and had a nice ball game. Yeah, Bowling Green opponents have been torching this Falcon defense through the air to the tune of 345 yards a game. Bowling Green surrendered 14 passing touchdowns. <laughs> so it, and it's such a different defensive philosophy from when Dave Clawson was here. He's a big defensive guy. This was the number five rated defense in the entire nation last year. But it just they're a little bit has to play a little bit differently now with this offensive pace. Here comes the blitz. Sprague picks it up and throws into a vacated spot. Forward progress to the 43 yard line. It's going to be fourth down and two. So I got to believe this is four down territory for Ohio again. Yeah, down 28 to six. I, I think it's got to be. This defense is a little bit more aggressive. Didn't quite see it in the replay, but they brought some pressure off the right side. And we've got another Bowling Green defender down at the 48. And that's been one of the biggest things for this defense, Dave, is Bowling Green's defense is, again, they're a keep everything in front of you, you know, that, that, that sort of deal. Bend but don't break, but they, they've been bad at tackling. If you're one of those kind of bend but don't break defenses, you got to be able to tackle well. And remember, this defense is without D.J. Lynch. They're also without Zach Coleman, one of their yeah. best defensive tackles. He's an all-Mac defensive lineman. This is a defense that already coming into this year lost six starters from last year. Then they entered the season and they're without Colvin, they're without Ward, they're without Lynch most of the year. So I mean, you can understand a little bit the amount of yards that they've given up. It's been a good defensive day for Dino Bab Babers and company. They played well in the second half of their victory last week against UB. Third quarter last week against the Bulls. Held Buffalo to just 27 yards on 14 plays. Fourth down and two. Patterson. And he is driven out of bounds. And he did not make it. Yeah, he didn't make it. And I thought he had an opportunity to cut that ball up and get a little more north-south. Instead, he bounced it outside one more time. And that was all the difference. Watch the play. You see it was an option. Good read. And right there, he should have taken it. And you see he stutters a little bit and tries to go toward the sideline. I think he stuck his nose up in that hole there a little bit. He might have been able to fight and squirm forward for the first down. So Ohio this afternoon is now 0 for 3 on fourth down attempts. Remember, they had a fake punt that came up just a yard shy in the first half. And this is far and away the best game Bowling Green's defense has played this year. I mean, they're giving up an average of 42 points a game here holding Ohio to, to six. Diving attempt at the 49-yard line. Lewis couldn't come up with it. Kanapke passes a little bit low. Lewis with four catches today for 68 yards. 
He's got 49 grabs on the season, three touchdown catches. And now you notice Bowling Green slows down a little bit. Can happy to throw. Again, he comes up short, incomplete. Tried to get that one to Heath Jackson, and suddenly it's third and ten. And not much time's coming off the clock. No, it's not. And like I said, they, they're trying to slow down a little bit. They, they still don't slow down a lot. That's just not their nature. But they want to get some ticks off that clock, but so far haven't, haven't been able to get many. Third down and ten. There's a hold. Yep. Incomplete as he just simply threw that ball out of bounds. Yeah, the whole stadium saw that when Kendrick Smith got held. Holding, Holding. offense number 53. Penalty decline, fourth down. Logan Dietz. The right tackle. See toward the bottom of your screen. Nice little quick inside move, and Deese knew he was beat. He tried to hold, throw up his hands lay at the end, but the damage was done. Again, it was all set up by a nice little quick inside step by Kendrick Smith. Swam back outside. And Deese had to hold him. Deese has played a lot of football for the, the Falcons. Already. Started virtually every game that he's been eligible for. And that will sail into the end zone. So Davidson's punt goes into the end zone. And the Bobcats get the ball back. Bobcats have 355 total yards in this game to this point. It's getting late in the third, but they have not found the end zone. You have to imagine those, they're going to try to go back to Chase Cocker in their home run threat. They tried twice in that last drive. Once should have been a penalty. The second time was good coverage. But they're going to go back to him. He's their, he's their best chance to quickly score. Bobcats scoring just 19 points a game coming into play today. Two first half field goals. That's all they've got on the board. It's 28 to 6. Sprague. Boy, nice move. But he'll be brought down. That'll go as a sack. Dropped back at the 16 yard line. It was a nice job by Olet. They brought the corner blitz. IJ Barima came off the edge, and Olet saw it just at the last second and stopped Sprague from getting killed. But a sack nonetheless. Loss of four. Second down and 16. Showing blitz. And an incomplete pass. Brendan Cope was the intended receiver. And Ohio's offensive set before that snap never really looked comfortable. They were obviously Offside, defense number 93. Five yard penalty, replay the down. So there you go. There's a break for Ohio. You notice Bowling Green's defense attacking a little bit more than you, you saw early in the year. I think they're again they're still trying to figure themselves out. And they're, they're still a keep it in front of you kind of defense, but I think they're liking the, the opportunity to be able to attack a little bit more. We're seeing it here today. Shannon Smith called for the offside. Corner blitz maybe coming at the top. They back out of it. Rush four, defend with seven. Sprague throwing on the run. Pass caught. First down and more. Midfield bumped out of bounds near the 44 yard line. Nice gainer for Jordan Reed. Sprague's done this well all day. This time the pressure again forces Sprague away from his side of his throwing arm. It's a nice job squaring his shoulders back and hitting the receiver. Jordan Reed. Sprague's been so good throwing outside the pocket today. That's a 34-yard gainer. Matches his career best. From the BG 45. Option. Olette takes the pitch. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of a half a yard. And yeah, they strung that option play out from the start. 
pick. That's Shannon Smith again, 93. Redshirt freshman, lineman for BG. He was in the middle of that. So it's second down and about 10 and a half. Mangan comes in motion to the right of the formation. Fake it to Olette. Out to Reed. And Reed is bumped out of bounds at the 40. So that'll bring up third down and five. Reed now with five catches on the game. Five catches for 79 yards. Sprague's now attempted 41 passes in this game. Diving catch. Nice catch. Nice we'll play. In the spot here. And it looks to be a first down. Yeah. And it is. Reed. Nice job of getting just enough yards for the first down. Jordan Reed's had a huge game today. He really stepped up. Just a redshirt sophomore. Reed's got six catches. Sebastian Smith has six. But now he, here's where they've all game run into the brick wall, Dave. Mm -hmm. Faking the safety blitz. Sprague throws. Nearly caught and then nearly intercepted. There were about four Falcon defenders and two Bobcats near that football. And they brought the safety Sutton again. I've done that the last couple times here on the last few drives. Four Sprague outside the pocket. That was a good job of having a lot of, a lot of hats around the ball there for Bowling Green. Sanford's had a good game subbing for D Jay Lynch. Pressure again. And here they come. Pass tipped at the line. Sprague tried to beat the blitz with a flip over the middle to Reed, and that pass was tipped and batted down. And with the way offenses are getting the ball out of their hands so quickly anymore, batting the ball down is just as good as a sack. He goes to the right guy. You see, he goes for Reed. D-line looks like that may have been Taylor Royster. Gets his hands up, knocks that ball down. Now again, third and 10. 28 to six, a half minute to go in the third. Ohio's abandoned the run on this drive. They fake it to Olet. Sprague steps up and throws another incomplete pass. There is Rylan Ward, club on his left hand and all. <laughs> nice that was off the club, I think. <laughs> so obviously another fourth down opportunity. Well, I was over three and fourth downs a day. Let's see if it goes to. Blitz coming. Sprague steps up, throws. Mangan was open. It would have been a first down inside the 15-yard line. And they the, brought a, yeah, essentially the same blitz, brought the pressure up the middle and then off to the left side of the offense as well. We've got a defender down for the Falcons. It looks like Taylor Royster, the defensive tackle, the guy that had that that batted down pass a few plays earlier. Falcon, uh, the Falcons looking good here, leading big, 28 to six. Here's what they've got coming up. Western Michigan at home at the Doit, then on the road at Akron. Look at those midweek games. I was going to say there's no Saturday games after next week. That's, you know, you get late in the season, a lot of those MAC games come to early in the week where they can be highlighted, but. At Kent State, no, I'm sorry, hosting Kent State, November the 12th. At Toledo, that's always a, a great game. Yeah. And then Ball State on the day after Thanksgiving. There's still some tough teams on there. Akron's playing well this year. Toledo is one of the better teams in the MAC. 
Got a couple of finals now in the MAC. Eastern Michigan trailed Buffalo in Ypsilanti 10 3 at the half, but came on strong in the second half to win 37 27. So the Eagles are now 2 and 4, 1 and 1 in the MAC. Buffalo drops to 3 and 4, 1 and 2 in the league. Fourth quarter underway in Akron, and the Zips lead Miami 22 13. Start of the fourth quarter, UMass leads at Kent State 27 17. Western Michigan Ball State just now starting the second half in Muncie. Ball State with a 31 14 lead. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go till halftime. Iowa State at home trailing Toledo 13 to 6. And that is going to be the final play of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. So we've got three quarters in the books here at Peden Stadium in Athens, Ohio. Homecoming for the Bobcats, but it's really been more of a party for the Falcons. Going to the fourth. Bowling Green leads Ohio 28 to 6. Time to start the fourth quarter. Frank Solich and the Ohio Bobcats homecoming here at Peden Stadium in Athens this afternoon, but it's been the Falcons. Bowling Green leads 28 to 6. They've got the ball as we start the final period. Pass incomplete. Moore was the intended receiver, and Javon Johnson, fourth year junior, had the coverage, and another flag is down. After the play, we have two offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. On sportsmanlike conduct, number 91, defense. On sportsmanlike conduct, number 77, offense. That is their first on sportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. One more, and they disqualify themselves. All right, so the, uh, the players involved, Antoine Crutcher, the nose guard for Ohio, and J.J. Began, the center, the backup center, for BG. Third down and 10. Ohio looks like they may try to bring some pressure, create something, get back in this game. Now, now Bowling Green's checking out of the call, and Ohio immediately checks out of their original defense. Pass tipped, picked off. This could go to the house. Johnson, five, touchdown, Ohio. Flag is down at the 20. Here's the question. Are they going to call targeting on that play? So the pass into the air picked off by Johnson. It's a pick six. He took it back to the house, but there's a penalty pending. And it happened quickly. It's one of those situations that you got a question. Was it a targeting? Was it a, a hitting on a defenseless receiver type penalty? That, could be the call they're discussing right now. Dino Babers, Frank Solich waiting. Here's the call. So take the touchdown yeah. off the board. That's huge. Well, yeah, I thought it could have been a targeting play. We'll get a look at the replay. Interference on was just, Devin yeah. Bass. Yeah, it looked like Bass may have gotten there a little bit early. It's such a bang-bang type play and very unfortunate for Ohio. They get a game-changing touchdown return, but it's all for naught. A tough afternoon for Frank Solich. And Javon Johnson almost making a play to get the team back in the I'll tell you what, he, he looked pretty good he with that football good. under his arm. He's fast. 
Kanapke on play action for Bowling Green. Fires incomplete. And starting to get a little chippy out yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Especially the offensive and defensive linemen. Sales in the middle of something. And BG's going to have to punt this ball away. You, you'd think with a 28-6 lead and the ball early in the fourth that you try to maybe run some clock here. Yeah, well, I mean, but they've really, other than a few broken runs by Travis Green, haven't had a ton of consistency in the run game. But I agree with you. Try to at least get, the, get some ticks off that clock. Rugby-style punt that time for Davidson. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hunt team continues to be an adventure for Ohio. They've got the ball back at their own 23, down 28 to 6. 14-26 to go in our ball game here in Athens, Ohio. Homecoming for Ohio. The Bobcats have the football, but they trail 28 to 6 to Bowling Green in a battle of two members of the MAC East Division. Sprague. That snaps a string of four straight incompletions, and he gets the ball to Cochran. And Cochran takes it up for close to a nine-yard gain. It'll be second down in a yard. Well, here's the deal. Look, Ohio's not totally out of this game. They're down 22, but they've been able to move the ball. But, A, it's, it's taken a lot of time, and, B, they really haven't been able to break through that seemingly brick wall on about the 30-yard line because Bowling Green's play really stiffened up back there. I mean, they have the ability. They've completed a lot of passes, had some explosive plays, and now they got to put together but do it quickly. Tim Edmond is in the lineup now. Wow. Mangan oh. can't hold on. Nearly made a circuit catch. Mangan's got good size on him. Almost comes down with the one-handed catch. Couldn't quite haul it in. He's six foot five. Threw a big arm up there, almost came down with it. Yeah, Edmund is in there, number 31 now, at the tailback spot. He scored his first career touchdown last week at Central Michigan, and here he gets the football. And he pushes the pile forward out near the 37-yard line, and that will be a first down. There's a good look at Tim Edmund, senior from Cincinnati. Got a defender for the Falcons coming off under his own power. Is that Kendall Montgomery down there? Yeah, it looked like it was Kendall Montgomery, 88. Mm -hmm. First and 10 for Ohio at the 37. Fake to Edmund. Sprague to throw again. Steps up and throws a, a long one. And Cochran was behind the defense, had a step, and it was just beyond his grasp, incomplete. And that ball could have been completed. It would have been a nice catch. And, but it looked like Cochran just, just slowed his speed down just a hair until he refound the ball, comes back to it. And I think it spread, kept him a little bit more on that seam instead of making Cochran come back to the middle of the field. They might have had a better shot at that one. Cochran has 15 career catches of 40 yards or more. Had a 46-yard grab last week in Mount Pleasant. Falcons show blitz, and I think we saw some movement in the offensive line for Ohio. Delay game on the defense for yelling at Kate and Joe. Ah. Causing a flinch by the offense. Five-yard penalty. Wow. I can't say I've seen that in, wow. in, in a long time, Dave. <laughs> So that makes it second and five. Yeah, I mean, what, what are you doing, you know? And here they come, blitz coming. Another sack. Sen came off the corner. Falcons just had more players than Ohio could, could block. And they brought the house on that one. Sen was completely unblocked. And Sprague's lucky that ball didn't come out. Because Sen had a clear shot to the quarterback. 
And afterward, it looks like it may be another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on, on the offensive line for Ohio. Paul Sin with the sack. Senior from California. At the end of the play, personal foul, continuing action, number 54, offense. 15-yard penalty. That's the center, Lucas Powell. Yeah, and that's critical because, again, now you obviously lose 15 yards. You were looking at a second and five. Yeah, but, then with the sack, then with the penalty. They brought eight players on that. Everyone man-to-man -man on the back end, and it gets home. And you see there, there's the extracurricular right there, and they're always going to go after the second guy. This is how it goes. Third and 27. Sprague. Rolling out of the pocket, finally throws it. Pass caught. And that's Ian Dixon. That's his first catch today. Comes back to the ball. Obviously way short. Personal foul, number 88 defense, hands to the face. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Wow. Now that's a game changer. Wow. Ohio's been penalized a dozen times for 99 yards in this game. And so a personal foul. That's a huge break wow. for Ohio. Wow. New set of downs, about another 30 and, yards of yardage. It was third and 27. Yeah. <laughs> Falcon showing blitz again. I've been watching Ohio's offensive line, the right tackle, number 79, Troy Watson. Didn't practice much at all this week, has played the entire game. Mangan on the catch, takes it down near the 47-yard line of BG. It's going to be a gain of four. I mean, if I'm Ohio, I would, I'd like a little more urgency right now. You ain't got to go super duper fast, but I mean, you know, you're down 22 points. You're down three scores. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to get something Central going here. Bowling Green sideline. There is no yard marked off. Just an official warning. Next result in a five yard penalty. We've had warning for personal foul. We've had a sideline warning. <laughs> We've had the defense calling out cadences. What haven't we seen today, Dave? Wow. Sprague to throw again. Flag is down. This is going to be a hold against Ohio. Sprague still on the move. First down and more, 40, 35, and out near the 30-yard line. But this is coming back. Yeah, if, if this is holding like I think it is, this is very unfortunate. Because just a great individual effort by Sprague. And you see him, how frustrated he is right there. Holding offense number 52. Take down. 10-yard penalty. Replay the down. Jake Cruz. He's a true freshman. He's Probably been a good player for him, but man, a huge penalty in a critical situation by Perus, and Frank Solich is not happy. 52 in, in green. He's the right guard. See as the play goes. And right there, he, he could have let him go, but why, why do you finish him to the ground right there? It's not a smart play. Again, a, a freshman, that's something he'll learn from, but you got to let, once a guy gets by you, you can't hold him, and you certainly can't bring him to the ground. Second and 16. Pass caught. Sebastian Smith, on the reception from Sebastian Smith makes the catch at the 42-yard line. If Ohio could go two or three plays without getting a penalty, they may be able to get something together here, but it's been just up and back, get a gain, get a penalty. How about this? Ohio is on pace now for 500 total yards, and they haven't scored a touchdown. If I would have said before the game, who's going to get 500 yards of offense, you wouldn't have said Ohio because – but I'll tell you what, they've done a good job, but you only see six points on the scoreboard. There's the penalty yards. Wow. Edmund has got the first down and more. That's a gain of 10. 
Nice job by Edmund. He's a senior. They get a ton of time. Bowling Green injury. Nice job finding the hole and getting through, breaking a few tackles. Got an injury timeout on the field. Ohio's driving, but they're trailing Bowling Green 28 to 6 early in the fourth. Great day to check out the football game here at Peden Stadium on the bank underneath the scoreboard. Nick Johnson was the injured player for the Falcons. He made it off the field under his own power. First down for Ohio at the Falcon 29 yard line. Sprague. How he got out of that. We didn't get out of that. Dragged down a sack. Brian Thomas. Yeah, what a nice job by Brian Thomas staying with that play and getting to him. He has the most sacks on the team. That makes four and a half for the season. Sprague, you know, he's just trying to do too much in there, but a credit just staying after the play. Good job by Brian Thomas. Thomas makes big plays. Rocky coming into this game, he had 14 tackles total and five and a <laughs> half tackles for losses. He has a knack for the big play. That's, that, that's what's important. Loss of nine, second down and 19. Sprague nearly intercepted. Sen nearly <laughs> picked that one off. It hit him between the three and the zero. It hit him right in the bad spot, the hands, Dave. Clearly an opportunity for a big play by, by Sen. But, but again, I said earlier, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand why Ohio is not picking up the pace. You're down three scores. I know you want to get in the perfect call and all that, but I, I go up tempo. Sometimes that can allow your offense to get into some rhythm too, but plus you got to save some time here. That was Sprague's 53rd pass of the game. He's 25 of 53 for 309 yards. Back to pass again. Pass is caught. Edmund, and he is bumped out of bounds near the 28. So fourth down coming up. You need three scores. So a field goal here is not an option. So this would be another fourth down attempt by Ohio. I believe they're over four on the day. They are 0 for four. Exactly right. Blitz coming off the corner. Fans wanted a flag, no call. Sebastian Smith was the intended receiver, incomplete, and the ball goes back over on downs to Bowling Green. Time now to take a look. Is there, a, there is a flag down back at the 40-yard line. Wow. Wow. Time to check out our Capital One Cup impact performance. And for the Falcons of Bowling Green, Travis Green. It doesn't have a ton of, the stats don't really jump out at you, but he's had a couple of huge plays, a couple scores early, and then there's one later on, and we'll see this run right here at his third touchdown. Excuse me, this is his first touchdown of the game, but still, he's had a big time impact on this game. So the rough in the passer call extends this drive. Reception made by Cope inside the 10 yard line. And this is the best, this is the deepest penetration of the game for Ohio. Well, no question, Dave. This is where first time they've really gotten down this far. Now they got to capitalize. Sprague to throw, end zone incomplete. Jordan Reed tried to go up the ladder. That was the fastball, though, from Sprague. He had some mustard on he that did. one. <laughs> Ohio has thrown the ball 55 times today. You got Chase Cochran singled on a backup cornerback, Will Watson, at the bottom of your screen. They have rushed it 44 times. Sprague to throw again to the end zone. Contact. Flags down. 
Reed was the intended receiver, and Sutton is going to be flagged for either holding or interference in the end zone. Pass interference, number three defense. Ball will be placed by rule at the two-yard line. First down. So it'll be first and goal at the two for Ohio. And even more importantly, they get a new set of downs. He just got there a little bit early, and that's a play where he'd like something to get his eyes around on the football. It's never good. Defender defender's never in a good position when he doesn't have his eyes back at the quarterback. When they get those eyes back and they go for a ball like that, usually the, the referee will give them the benefit of the doubt, but he didn't on that play. So Edmonds stays in there in the backfield. He scored a touchdown last week at Central Michigan. Here he's got a chance to score again, and he will take it into the end zone. Takes a hard hit at the wow. goal line, but he is in for an Ohio Bobcat touchdown. Well, they ran it when they had to, David. Good job. Getting the ball just a student body right, pull all the linemen, get him to the outside. He took a big time shot by Ryland Ward, but credit him A for holding on to the ball and B getting in the end zone. Well, last week when he scored, that was his first career touchdown. He got into the end zone at Central Michigan. Now Tim Edmond has scored a touchdown in consecutive games. Yazdani adds the extra point, and it's 28-13. Nine twenty-six to go in the fourth quarter. Bobcats find their way into the end zone on homecoming Saturday, but they still trail 28-13. Tim Edmond, a two-yard touchdown run for the Ohio Bobcats. Nine twenty-six to go, fourth quarter. Bowling Green continues to lead, however, 28-13. to It was a long drive, 15 plays, 77 yards, took exactly five minutes. And it was a drive that was extended by a roughing the passer penalty on fourth and ten mm. and on an incomplete pass. So the Bobcats into the end zone for the first time in this game. Still trailed by, by two scores, down by 15, 9.26 to play. You see Bowling Green State expecting the onside kick here. So they got the hands team in there. But instead, Yazdani will kick it deep. And I think that's okay. Look, I mean, how many three and outs has Ohio's defense gotten today? Kick the ball deep, get him on the 20-yard line, and get a three and out. But I'll tell you what, if I'm Ohio's D, I'm starting to bring some pressure right near, try to force Kanapke into a into a bad pass. Of course, you have to imagine Bowling Green is going to try to keep this ball on the ground during this drive. Kanapke, 18 of 37, 228 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Ryan Burbrink has caught five passes for 77 yards and a touchdown today. Travis Green has scored twice. A rushing touchdown and scored us on a screen pass on the first possession of the game to put BG in front, 7-0. They have never trailed. Fred Coppett on the carry. And give Coppett a yard, and that's it. It'll be second down and nine. Ohio has three timeouts. Obviously, I don't think now is a good time to use them, but. Watson Tatuiaki made the stop. 34 for Ohio. You see him in there at the nose guard spot right now. And it's almost odd watching this Bowling Green offense not go fast. You know, they're trying to milk the clock out, which is the smart call, no question. But it's just funny looking out there watching them go slow. You yeah, it's kind of like it. revving the engine. <laughs> So the pitch. Wow. Cop it again. Quinton Poling came over and really delivered a shot for Ohio. Quinton Poling doesn't is not in your screen, then you'll see him all of a sudden boom, emerge. That's what great linebackers do. They make plays behind the line of scrimmage. You never want to be a guy that's, yeah, I come out of the game with 10 tackles, but they're all 5, 10 yards down the mm -hmm. field. Wooden Pulling makes plays in the backfield. On third and eight, BG will go with an empty set. Here comes the blitz. Pass is caught by Lewis, and Lewis has the first down up at the 36-yard line. That second effort got it for him. It was a great job of second effort, Dave, by, by Lewis. Fighting, getting forward for that first down. We'll see the play. Just a freshman fighting off one defender, two spinning, rolling forward. 
Wow, almost lost the football, but held on. Moves the sticks for BG. So you see number 28, Coppett, staying in there in the backfield. He's used to finding the end zone. He scored a touchdown. He's got one touchdown in five of BG's first six games. Has not scored today yet. And he's got the football now. <laughs> and you say yeah because he has big playability. We talked about Travis Green, but Coppett's their fastest running back. He's more of a more of a slasher, one cut and go. But he has the Jets to leave him in the dust. He's from Fort Lauderdale. St. Thomas Aquinas won two state championships in high school. Scored 58 touchdowns in his prep career. Last week, 11 rushes for 61 yards and a touchdown in the win against Buffalo. You see the clock ticking down to the seven-minute mark. Yeah, this is really odd watching BG <laughs> just stand over the football. Cop it again. There, there it he goes. Breaking tackles inside the 20, the 10, all the way down to the seven yard line. But and it wouldn't be a play down. without a flag. I'm sorry, Dave, but flag how many times down. have we seen those today? Especially just negating big plays. How about it? Holding offense, number 53. Fans giving the Bronx cheer <laughs> after that big play comes off the board. Trying to get a look. Hard to tell exactly from the replay where the foul happened, but as I said, Coppett, he, ha he has the Jets to leave you now. Bobbles on number 71. On the center. To McAuliffe, redshirt freshman. When we talked to Coach Babers about McAuliffe during the week. He's not very tall, just six foot, but he said McAuliffe's been used to being short his whole life, but he uses good <laughs> leverage, you know, fights hard out there. It does a good job of getting to the second level. Just got a little bit, a little bit too energetic on that one. Lewis breaks a tackle. Still on his feet into Bobcat territory, fighting his way down near the 48. Roger Lewis has just really come on this year. You know, Dino Babers talked about this week. He's a guy that after his first spring practice, he said, yeah, this guy could possibly play. But then during the time, Dave, between the end of spring ball and the start of summer practice, really got in the playbook, worked on his understanding of the offense, and he's come out since day one and been a big part of this offense. You know, I really enjoyed a conversation with Dino earlier this week on a, a couple of different levels. He had some very interesting things to say about his influences on his career there goes Coppett give him two yards up the middle he said the the coaches that influenced him the most he had a really interesting group Dick Tomey <laughs> Homer Smith and of course Art Riles he was the wide receivers coach for Baylor First charge, 30 seconds. and two games this season they had been over 100 offensive plays they're averaging 85 offensive snaps a game they went over 100 against UMass over 110 in their win at the Doit against Indiana. And uh, he confirmed something that I had heard that two years ago when they played Murray State when he was the coach at EIU, that's Chris Hatcher. He's another yeah. air raid guy mm -hmm. uh, from the Hal Mummy coaching tree. Those two teams combined for the current record for most offensive snaps in a game. Yeah, they, uh, and he's taken each of the three of those coaches he talked about, he's taken a little bit of pieces here and there from each one of those, but the speed, the tempo comes from none other than Art Bryles. That's what he's done for a long time down there at Baylor. But really been, along with Chip Kelly, one of the, the revolutionaries of the up-tempo, super high, hyper-speed offenses. And when uh, we asked him about if he'd ever run across Frank Solich in the past, he brought up a really interesting memory about the <laughs> Holiday Bowl when Frank was at Nebraska and he was at Arizona State. Top it again to the 44-yard line, and it's going to be third down. Here we go. More penalties. I'm going to be seeing flags in my sleep tonight. Somebody's going to get tossed out of this game here. There's, there's been just too many of these penalties. Oh, 
Ohio currently 13 penalties for 109 yards. And BG was doing well for a while, but now they're back up to their average. Eight penalties, 75 yards. And that doesn't count the flag they threw on the band. <laughs> there are two fouls on Ohio at the end of the play. Personal foul, Ohio number 51, unnecessary roughness. Personal foul, number 99 on the defense of Ohio. He threw a punch after trying to strip the ball. He is disqualified. So Kurt Lasik is going to be gone. First down. Trying to see if we can get a shot of it here. Again, he's got, they're fighting, you know, they're trying to rip that ball. You see number nine toward the middle. But then right Ooh. there, I mean, that's, you know, that's, wow, that's ridiculous. So he, at that point, you're not trying to rip the ball. I know he can make a case. He's trying to punch the ball out, but you can't do that in that situation. No way. Yeah, it's just a, a poor decision, especially considering there's been a lot of chippiness between both these offensive and defensive lines. Refs are going to be looking to make a call, a call like that. So after the Markoffs, this is going to move the football down to the Bobcat 14. Five and a half to play. You know, I wonder at some point, Lasik should have to leave the premise of this game, leave the sideline. Usually they don't resume play until they're heading toward the locker room. Cop it on the carry, and he is thrown back by Ohio's defense, led by Casey Sales. The other thing I like what Dino Babers talked about this week, he said, I, I like to play an entertaining brand of football. I don't know if I've ever heard another coach say that. You know, there's there's ways of winning, but he said, look, I, you kind of got to play this entertaining brand. It's good for the athletic directors, good for the alumni, good for, obviously, recruits. Mm -hmm. You bring a kid in here and say, wow, we, we're in 85 plays a game. We score 50 points a game. That gets kids, especially in, in 2014, Dave, these high school kids want to go to, to programs like that. No, that's definitely true. That's a good point. Green with the football. And he is driven out of bounds near the 10-yard line. Here's Ohio's upcoming schedule. You know, got some bumpy trips here. Akron's improved. Never know what's going to happen when you go to Kalamazoo. Buffalo's better. Northern Illinois. And then, of course, uh, their arch rivals at Miami in Oxford. Yeah, and like you said, there, there are some, some tricky games. Akron's a better team. I mean, Miami's actually a better team. Like they were behind versus Akron today earlier that I saw. We'll get an update on that. Yeah, I'll give you an update. That, that game's the final now. Akron beat Miami 29-19. Okay. Third and 10. Green. Brought down from behind. Cameron McLeod made the stop. 94. Ohio. Second charge. 30 seconds. Ohio now with just one timeout remaining. Get you caught up on some of the scores from around the MAC. Many of our early afternoon games have gone final. Eastern Michigan at home beat Buffalo 37-27. Akron a winner at home over Miami 29-19. Akron now 4-2, 2-0 in the league. Miami drops to 1-6, 1-2 in the MAC. Final, UMass gets their first win of the season at Kent this afternoon. It's a final now, 40-17. UMass is 1-6, 1-2 in the league. Kent drops to 0-6, 0-3 in conference play. After three quarters in Muncie, Ball State leads Western Michigan, 38-28. Also, uh, 12 minutes to go in the third quarter in Ames. Iowa State, out of the Big 12, now leads Toledo, 16-13. Tyler Tate, who's had a tremendous season, on to kick a field goal for Bowling Green. And the kick is up, and it's good. 
He had three field goals last week against Buffalo. Third year as the place kicker. 31-13 now. Yeah, that was a nice shot, Bowling Green. Obviously, they got three points out of it. Most importantly, they're able to get some time off the clock. Tate's the reigning Mac special minutes, teams player think, yeah. of the week. That's the third time he's won the award. The last five weeks, Bowling Green has had the special teamer of the Mac East award. Burbrink won it one week, and uh, Davidson won it a week as well. Ian Baber said Tyler Tate is an NFL kicker, and I, I don't disagree with him. 26-yard field goal. And it's such a difference between this team with Dino Babers at the helm versus Dave Clawson. Talked a little bit about Dave Clawson's old school, you know, win the line of scrimmage, balance attack, power football guy. And then you got Dino Babers kind of opposite. He's new age. He's got the, the Falcon fast offense, <laughs> uh, a more offensive driven team. And I, I think at first Bowling Green fans were a little bit, I don't know how to, how to take this guy, especially when they lost that opener in, in bad fashion to Western Kentucky. But I, I really, I believe in Dino Babers. I, I co covered one of his games last year. Very confident guy, very smart man at the game of football. And I think he's going to have a tremendous career here at Bowling Green. I agree with that. Robbie Walker is back to return this punt or kickoff for Ohio. High short kick taken at the 17-yard line. Walker across the 30 and spins forward near the 38. Three and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. It's a three-score game again. 18-point lead for Bowling Green. Last Ohio possession resulted in a touchdown. Tim Edmund, a two-yard score. That last drive that ended with a 26-yard field goal by Tyler Tate. 11 plays, 66 yards, 546 coming off the clock. Looks like they're going to try to get some work for the backup quarterback, Greg Windham. Good idea. Yeah. And Especially as how banged up this team is, Dave. You'd like to have as many guys as you can with, with some ex game experience. You never know. Catch made by Cochran, and he immediately goes out of bounds. So Sprague's day is done. He'll finish the day 27 to 56, 325 yards. He also rushed the ball 16 times for 49 yards. He had a good day. In my opinion, watched him over the course of this year. No question his, his best game, most explosive game. Especially under a defense in Bowling Green that was bringing some pressure a lot of the game. He was able to escape outside the pocket, make some nice throws. Wyndham's completed two passes in a row. Make it three. And that's another first down up at the BG 39. Aaron Bradley on the reception. Bradley is a former three-year starter at Nevada in the graduate program here at Ohio. Another reception. And it's Bradley again. He went up the ladder for that one. Wyndham getting some confidence back here. Nice strike, good solid. Sets his back foot and gets his whole body into that throw. Bradley had a 20-yard reception last week at Central Michigan. From the 14-yard line, 2.45 at a moving clock, fourth quarter. Wyndham, again, the quick uh, trigger pass is caught. Sebastian Smith takes it down near the seven. Make it the eight. Wyndham really drives that ball. Gets his whole body into it. Has decent, really good velocity on his throws. Here you see the final numbers for Sprague. Smith stepped out at the four. That's going to be the ninth catch of the game for Sebastian Smith. You see when him set his back foot, unleash that thing, hit the wide receiver, very accurate. He said Smith stepped up and had a good game. 
you know, some, some good individual performances by mm -hmm. this Ohio offense. It's just really, it's all about the red zone. They're going to go back to the drawing board this week and try to figure it out, see what they can do to get better in the red zone. Empty backfield, five wide, trips to the top. From the four, Wyndham throws, pass caught, and down to the one-yard line. That's Dorian Brown, Richard freshman from Baldwin High School in Pittsburgh. And that's Daryl Hunter down on the field for BG. So Hunter getting some medical attention. There's Sprague again. You know, he was effective when he ran the ball, too. I mean, coming in this game, he had 585 yards. He gets 315 today. But you see that the, the one that's uh, the column is lacking, you see, is the touchdown column. Did a good job taking care of the football. Now, Wyndham uh, appeared briefly in the game in the first half and threw an incomplete pass. There you see Hunter going off the field under his own power. Ha coming in now, Wyndham has completed seven in a row for 61 yards. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think there's a, a quarterback controversy or anything like that, but no. it's still always good to get your back up uh, some reps. You see how quickly these guys can go down. You want a guy with some experience. Balls on the ground. Wow. Botched exchange between Brown and Wyndham. Recovered by the Falcons, and that should just about do it. What do you know, another flag on this? I haven't seen play. any of those today. <laughs> Shannon Smith with Even the recovery. He looks disgusted in the amount of flags. Ohio recovered by the defense. It's first down. After the play, personal foul number 67 in the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down, Bowling Green. So that'll be half the distance to the goal. Yeah, that play was just, just bad from the start. Bowling Green jumps on it. It's going this way. It's yeah. on Ohio. There you see 67. Lucas really spearing really at, toward the end of that play. Ohio can only stop the clock one more time. They have one timeout remaining. Bowling oh. Green grabbed a quick 14-0 lead after the first three minutes of this game. And they've really never looked back. Never really got the feeling that Ohio ever threatened in this game. Yeah, you know, they looked like they were going to score 70 points. That didn't happen. But but like you said, even though they, they often stalled, couldn't quite get in the end zone as much, you, you never really got the feeling that Ohio was going was gonna to come back in this game. Andre Gibbons on the carry. Gibbons had a touchdown run in the first half. And he takes it again out near the 35-yard line as we go under a minute to play. Clock is stopped. They'll move the chains. Givens again. Dragged down from behind by Teron Davis. Davis put in a starting spot today. With the, the victory, Bowling Green is going to go to 5-2 and 3-0 and and oh in the MAC for the second consecutive year. Ohio is going to drop to 3-4 and 1-2 and and in conference play. And Bowling Green is going to remain in sole possession of first place in the MAC East Division. Final snap of the game, barring a defensive penalty, and that is going to do it. Frank Solich, Dino Babers will meet in the center of the field, and that is going to do it. Rocky, final comment. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those games. That Bowling Green didn't put up the, the video game-like numbers, but you got to give credit where credit's due. They're 3-0. Sitting at the top of the MAC, their defense really today, Dave, was the, was the story. 
defense was much maligned throughout most of the year, but really found a way to shore up and attack a little bit more, but most importantly, keep the other team out of the end zone. Ohio controlled the ball for almost 40 minutes. They had 513 yards of total offense, but couldn't cash in when they needed to. So for Rocky Borman, I'm Dave Weekly saying so long from Athens, Ohio, with a final score. The Falcons of Bowling Green 31, the Ohio Bobcats 13. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app.